All right, so I think we're ready to go. Let's make this happen. That's always the introduction on any live videos. I think we're live. Are we live? I think we're live. Are we live? I think we're live. What's going on? Something in the chat? It says live right there. It's live. <laughs> All right, everybody, check it out. Welcome to uh, this week's exciting episode of Omni Bro Omni Bros Live. I need to pronounce that better. Um, this is the weekly YouTube awesome channel show. Uh, all about omnibus collecting, uh, featuring all of your favorite omnibus collectors out of the omnibus collectors Facebook group. Um, starting out, we have the one, the only, the man who makes this happen every week, uh, Mr. Alimony Hall himself, <laughs> the Omni Dog, Jess Bragg. Everybody, say what up, Jess. Hey yo, what up? Hit him with the hind. What up? What up? And of course, if you don't recognize this, this beautiful. Yeah, who are, who the hell are you? Yeah, who's the bald guy? Is that Luis? <laughs> no, nah, this isn't Luis. This is Luis's dad. Luis's uh, dad. Gabe, yep. This is Gabe Infinity Watch. Everybody, uh, thanks to everybody showing up in the chat. We got a good group of people started off already. Already, Luis, everybody. Let me mute this dad. bullshit. All right. Uh, so anyways, Jess, what's, what's been going on, man? How are you doing? Uh, all my teeth are fine. I haven't broken any in two weeks. Um, it's been beautiful weather here in sunny Virginia. So uh, I'm all in one piece right now, so I'm happy. Powder toast cereal. Nice. Man. Yeah, everybody in the chat wanted to see my shirt. This is my Powder Toast Man shirt. With and where's he from? This is from Ren and Stimpy. Oh my gosh, I forgot all about that. Yeah, he flies backwards and he had to grab onto his butt cheeks as he flew backwards. <laughs> awesome. So there we go. There we go. Cool. Oh man. How's it going there? In lost crazy. wages. Uh that's crazy week still. Everything's still kind of uh it's still kind of rough out here, you know, just kind of everybody's mentality and you know, things like that going on. But, yeah. I mean, it's always, I think, uh, like, they had a security guard on Ellen talking about how he got shot at the uh, the event and everything like that. But, wow. Yeah, so it's still going on. But Was Ellen in Vegas or they flew him to L.A. or wherever? I think they flew him to L.A. Okay. Yeah, so. That'd be cool if she did her show from Vegas for a week. <laughs> She'd probably be dead with all the hookers and drugs out here. <laughs> She'd be hitting the strip clubs, I bet. Probably. I mean, why not? I, why I still not? need to find out. I still haven't found out yet if strip clubs have Wi-Fi access. <laughs> I bet they won't let you even pull your cell phones out this day and age. I don't know. I see like uh, Instagram videos of people at strip clubs throwing money at strippers and stuff. Oh. I don't know if I want to be in anybody's picture throwing money <laughs> at a stripper. We'll see. Yeah. I don't know if that was like a private event. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm excited to come out there next year for that signing. Yeah, man. Hopefully that's something that gets set up soon. I mean, I know we uh, supposedly we're getting uh, Ed McGinnis out here pretty soon. Okay. Um, actually, I'm texting the guy, the other, the other guy I work with. Because he wants to know if he th if I think Hot Toys would sell well in the store. And do you think they would? I'm replying back, but fuck yeah, they will. <laughs> there we go. Cool. So let's see. What we got going on? Who's in the chat so far? Who do we got in the chat, everybody? We got Justin Darcy is the first one in there. Uh, Jesse say what's in there. Our boy Nick. Roman's in there. Omni Dog's in there. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Shakara Darling's in there. John Wilson, all the way from the UK. Right Thomas on, John. Wilson. John, do you got any SIGs for me? And then, of course, we've got John P., the troublemaker himself, the the Howard Stern trivia master. In the group. <laughs> yeah. 
I'll try not to play Howard Stern trivia while I'm on the air. Yeah, it's only it's only us, man. I, mean, I, I need I need I need some attention on here. <laughs> <laughs> We have our, a viewer from the Netherlands. Netherlands. The Netherlands. Yeah, Tolga. 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 I know. Every time I, I see him, I just want to wear like a, a, a sheet. <laughs> yeah, we got 21 watching right now. So that's pretty fucking cool. Right on. That's good considering we were late. but And we were about two minutes from not even having a show. So <laughs> it's just. It's very, very. It was very, very last minute of us trying to figure out topics and are we gonna do this now or? This was the most last minute we've ever been, and we're pretty last minute. Benjamin, shout out to Benjamin. Shout out to Drew Bloodworth. Hey, whatever, everybody. Thanks for thanks for waiting. Thanks for waiting. All right, so let's gonna get this started up. Let's go ahead and let's get the uh, party everybody's favorite segment started up with show us your haul. Shirtless Gabe. Oh, show oh, us your haul. <laughs> okay. You want me to start that off? Yes, it's what show us your haul, Jess. Okay. I just got this in from last week. First thing I got from Oni Press, the bunker. Ooh. On their way to bury a time capsule, this is a cool sounding book. On their way to bury a time capsule, five friends uncover a metal bunker buried deep in the woods. Inside, they find letters addressed to each of them from their future selves. Told they will destroy the world in the very near future, the friends find themselves over the next few days growing further and further apart. Can the future really be changed or will an even darker fate engulf the world i'm not even looking at the the art i don't even know how the art is but the book just sounded so good to me no i remember this was coming out i think that's written by joshua hale fiofkoff also he was a guy that did the uh what was that book i was talking about last week uh the torsos torso i think that's what no not torso that was bendis i think that's bendis yeah no, actually, yeah, that's a uh, uh, Mark and Draco, Venice's friend. Oh, it is. Yeah. Where is Tony? Echoes. Echoes. That's what it is. Echoes. Echoes. Okay. Yeah. yeah but isn't that awesome. Joshua Hale Fioscoff, though? Is that, is it is. Right? Yeah, you're right. And here's one with Fiona Staples art that I'm really excited about by Steve Niles Mystery Society. Oh, cool. I didn't know she did anything else besides Saga. Yeah. This is from IDW. Okay. So I'm psyched about that because I love her art. It's cool to see art that, that's different than her normal, just like, you know. Right. Science fiction <laughs> art. This is, uh, and I need to read this before the end of the month because it's a scary book. Harrow County number six. I need to get this in before Halloween passes me by. Flash Mark Wade, volume three. Ooh. That's nice. I've never read Flash, uh, Mark Wade's Flash, but it's Mark Wade, and it's uh, I've read a little bit his issues here and there when they were first coming out because that's Wally West, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's Wally. In that blah, blah, blah. Wade continued to work on Wally West. Yeah, cool. I haven't read it either, but I know it's it's Wade, and it's awesome. It must be. It has to be. Then I got the latest Deathstroke. This is apparently awesome. I still haven't got to it in my Rebirth readathon, which I'm doing right now. But um, everybody raves about Deathstroke. So I got it's Christopher Priest. So I got to get on this. I have to get on my continue my horror reading and DC Rebirth. And here's the latest Bombshells, Volume Five. There's usually some good eye candy in this book. Yeah, didn't they relaunch the series? Like, I think it's like Bombshells United now or something. Uh, they, I think you're right. Yeah, in singles, I think they've got a new, a new. Well, you're the you're the comic book store expert. Yeah, I think they did relaunch it. 
Yeah, that's the thing. Now that I work in a comic book store, I might have to start reading singles again. I'm not going to buy them. I could just read them and bring them back to the store. But yeah, well, then you'll have an ex even another extra leg up. <laughs> yeah. Here's by Jason Latour, Black Cloud, Volume 1. I read great things about this, so I decided to go with it. Um, I have no idea what it's about. But uh, I love Jason Latour, so, and it got high marks on the internet from some guy. Um, latest Mike, reliable. huh? I said that sounds reliable, some guy's opinion. Some dude on the internet told me it was good. Mike Mignola, wait, lasagna Mignola, yeah. The Visitor, how and why he stayed. I don't think this is in the Hellboy universe. Oh, it is in the Hellboy universe. Yeah, it is in the Hellboy universe. So I'm happy to get that. It only says so at the very top of the book there. <laughs> yeah, from the pages of Hellboy, Jess. <laughs> and it's got a picture of Hellboy on the back. So uh, you got confused. I understand. <laughs> um, and a book that Ryan says, the Welsh bastard, just finished in like two seconds flat and says is awesome super sons dc rebirth so i am excited about that book and the book that everybody's excited about that i read in singles the complete luther strode oh man so i really this is a nice big book. book i really want to get that yeah, this is a great book. I read it in singles back in the singles buying days, and it is great. This is where I first saw Trad Moore's art, mm -hmm. and it's pretty radical. I mean, his style is very radical and um, really cool. It, it, it fits perfect with that the tone of that book. It is very over-the-top violence and blood. Yeah, like, totally agree with that. It's like every time he punches somebody, like they lose a head or a limb or <laughs> in their chest or something like that. And then, oh, I didn't know the back cover was lenticular, too, the button. Oh, button's nice. That's cool. Let's see if I can get it to lenticulate. There it is. Flash, oh, Batman, Batman Flash. Flash, Batman. And then in back, reverse Flash. Skip. Why is it not doing it? Well, he turns into a skeleton. Yeah. Have you read that? Did you read the singles or anything? I haven't yet. No, and, and I'm told that I need to wait to read this. That this is actually, a, uh, I need to read like volume two of Superman action and Batman and Wonder Woman and stuff. But this has actually been released too soon as far as the reading order goes. Because uh, Ryan Sace has also been um, doing a rebirth read through. And, uh, he said the button is too soon that oh, okay. um and and i don't have volume i don't have volume two of the, of the hardcovers yet they haven't come out yet of a lot of things so i will be waiting on that one but that's it for my haul because i read the button as it was coming out like i have the singles oh okay and i mean i it i was still able to kind of follow up or follow with it and it seemed like a really good story um it just didn't – it makes you think it's connecting with Watchmen, and it really doesn't give you that kind of impression right away. Hmm. But there's some okay. really cool stuff that goes on, um, especially if anybody out there who's a fan of Flashpoint. There's some cool callbacks. I, I am a huge fan of Flashpoint. Okay, so I think you'll get it. You could probably you probably would really dig what happens in there. You might even be able to read it right away and not worry okay. about it. If you're being told to wait, then – then, you know, I don't think you're going to miss out if you wait. Okay. On. What'd you pick up? All right. So I got, I went to the store yesterday on my way to work and picked up a couple of just quick books real quick. So I had something to talk about. So I'm not like, I didn't, read anything, <laughs> I didn't buy anything. Let's just talk kind of thing. <laughs> um, but I've been wanting to get some uh, rebirth stuff because I know you guys have been picking it up. I know you're doing a read through and the flash book or the rebirth rebirth books have been really great like the hardcovers are fantastic so with that said i'm going to just kind of pick up the ones that i've been hearing the best uh kind of reviews about on the boards 
And I'm going to start off with uh, the Flash, which this is a great. I just love the way the book looks. The art in it's really awesome as well. That's the um, Josh Williamson one. Yep, this is a Flash Rebirth one. Right. Hardcover. And yeah, with I all still the, need to read that. And with all the cool Rebirth books, I love that they have the wraparound printed art. Agree. So, I mean, fuck dust jackets. I mean, I just like, they could just do this and I'd be happy with it. I now. agree with that. I'd take my dust jackets off and just store them like that, but then that'd be a whole new bag of dust jackets collecting somewhere because I'd hate right. to throw them away. Yeah, if they just put them to spine, like, you know, Flash Volume 1 Rebirth, that'd be fine. And then you could put it on your shelf like this. I, don't, I mean, I think the idea is, from what I've heard, is the dust jackets are just a stipulation so that the, these books can be sold in bookstores like Barnes & Noble. Oh, okay. I might be completely off base, but I've been told that. That's interesting because hardly any, if any, saw or, uh, image books come with dust covers. Right. But they neither do uh, soft, uh, just regular novels. You know. Right. That's true. Let's see. Invincible has a dust cover. Satellite Sam. Not a lot of image books have dust covers. Mm. So yeah, there's that. I'm 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 really pumped to start reading this. I want to get. I have a. I bought like the first maybe like five or six issues of the Rebirth stuff when they were coming out in singles, because I remember DCBS was like you could buy all the number ones for like five dollars, and I was like fuck yeah, I'll get them all for five bucks. <laughs> DCBS is really good about blowout deals on uh, like bundles and stuff like that for singles. Uh, so yeah, there's Flash, and then the other one I kept hearing really great reviews about. I think even even you yourself raved about this one a little bit, and that's uh, Spider Man Volume One or Spider Man Superman Volume One. Yeah, it's great. Uh, Rebirth. I wanted to get uh, action, but we didn't have action in stock, so I'm gonna have to order um, action Volume One from the store, and I'll get that in you know a couple weeks or whatever. But mm. again, this is a really cool wraparound cover as well. So one side you got a you got Jonathan Kent, and then you got Clark Kent, but then you can open it like this. Oh, nice! Oh, yeah. One, one image. This is what this is Peter. Uh, this is Peter J. Tomasi and uh, Patrick Gleason. Yeah, I think they did a really good job on that book. Doug Monkey, I think, did a couple issues. But these Rebirth books, they're thirty-five bucks, and it's. I think this is the same for all of them, or for the most part. It is issues 1 through 13, and then the uh, Rebirth number one, uh, one shot. Like Flash Rebirth number one, Superman Rebirth number one. So right. Books for 35 bucks. You know, I, they're, they're pretty cheap on in-stock trade. I mean, they're probably at like the $45 percent discount. Yeah. Rate. So... Yeah, that's cool. And just to answer Tolga's question, I've read Last Days of American Crime, and it's awesome. Oh, the Recommender book, right? Yeah. I love that book. I need to reread it. And the last little bit I got is I needed the final hardcover for Thanos Infinity uh, storyline. Oh, do you like Thanos? Oh, yeah. Maybe just a little bit. <laughs> I, mean, I heard he was kind of cool. Yeah. I heard he he's the bad guy in Justice League. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. But yeah. There he is. Um, so the, yeah, this is a three hardcovers uh, volume story arc. And it's written and drawn by Jim Starlin. No, wait, I'm lying. Jim Starlin wrote it, but Ron Lim is back doing the art in this one. And Ron Lim, of course, is the guy that did Infinity Gauntlets and Silver Surfer and Omar's here. There goes Omar, the what's up, dude? Hi, I'm here. How are you guys tonight? Good. Good, Good timing. Man. I'm trying to learn how Excel works on a Mac. Ron Lim is the guy that drew like 18 comic books a month. 
He was the man. He was the man. Back in the 90s, that dude could carry like uh, – okay, no exaggeration. I think he had four monthly books. Yeah, and he's back. He's back to his, his awesome self in here. His stuff looks great. But so I'm gonna start being. I'm gonna be able to read this cool Thanos storyline now that I have all three hardcovers. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm ready for that. That's gonna be super badass. So Omar, you came just in time, man. For hashtag show us your haul. What do you got going? I got this guy right here. This is uh, third party reformatted. Tyranitron, because it is completely illegal to call him Megatron, right? But everybody knows this is, spoilers, Autobot Megatron when he joins the Lost Light. That's from the IDW books, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I also, because of Super Squad D, shameless plug, not even my channel, but I love those guys, <laughs> I ended up picking up this stupid book because I already owned the trade paperbacks, but I decided to get this. This is the... Thor Omnibus, The Hero's Return, the return Thor Omnibus by Dan Jurgens and John Romita Jr. Yeah, Tyler was psyched on that book. I own the trades, man. And you know what's funny? <laughs> I own the original trades, too, and I decided to upgrade those trades because they were, like, falling apart. So you triple dipped on the Heroes Reborn Thor? <laughs> Don't judge me. I'm not. Yeah. I'm just, I did. I'm just I did. I sold it. Here. I'm, a piece, I'm a piece of shit with low fucking impulse buying. God, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I, I did. I triple dipped. That's cool, dude. I love that that omnibus, dude. I got that last week. That was a day one. Oh, yeah, cool. IST for me immediately. On my, uh, on my Instagram, I posted because I got Planet Hulk last week. Planet Hulk, Simus and Thor re reprint Omnibus, and Thor, Heroes Reborn Thor. And somebody was like, if you could only pick one of those, which one would you have picked? The Walt Simons and Thor? And I was like, nah, dude, fuck that book. Not, nothing. <laughs> what? It. I just never read it. So if I had to pick, oh, I would have picked the Heroes Reborn Thor because that's that's my golden age sweet spot right there. And that's how you that's how you honeypot me, is you give me some 90s comics action. You know, and I love that series. And there's some really cool Thanos books in there as well. Uh, John Romita was on top of his game, drawing Juggernaut and Thor and Olden and like just. Big and big John big. Romita was also at the time working on Spider Man. Yeah, dude, he was doing that. So he was he was Ron Lim. He was drawing. He draws like he, he was Ron Lim. Lim. I like, that's a verb. <laughs> Ron Lim, shoot up, man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love. I loved. Uh, that's. My, Actually, the Amazing Spider-Man at that time when Straczynski took over, that is probably my favorite uh, John Romita Jr. style. Because I'm not a big fan of John Romita Jr. The guy's he's a really cool dude. I've met him a couple times, but I've never been a big fan of him. Even even back in his 80s days when he was drawing Uncanny and Daredevil. Um, it, but for some reason, I can't remember the inker. I know it wasn't Klaus Jansen, but whoever inked his stuff, maybe it was Scott Hanna on Amazing Spider-Man when Straczynski came in. It was just perfect. Uh, I love that run. No, that, that run was great because that was the whole um, – Peter Parker became like a teacher, and then they had that 9-11 issue right in the middle of the run. Where Yeah. Yeah. Like, I forgot my uh, the main thing in my hall. There she is. Oh, yeah. I saw oh, that. Sweet. Yeah, I saw your post, and I figured <laughs> <laughs> you had forgotten you pre-ordered it. Is that what happened? Um, no, I remembered <laughs> it. It um, I I remembered that I ordered it. Um, the question is, when it gets discovered by uh, the member of the opposite sex in this family, what's going to happen? Oh right, yeah. Uh, because past Jess is makes terrible decisions, and uh, future Jess always pays the consequences. And future yeah. Jess is now present Jess, so <laughs> I'm paying for past Jess's stupidity. But God, she's gorgeous. It, she looks huge compared to those library editions. Yeah, she's like twice as tall as, as the the goon library. Um. She was easy to put together, and I mean the cape is all flowy, and she looks good. The paint job's good. Um, I'm really happy with it. Um, and the 
the real issue is that I have like two more coming in. Uh, Wonder Woman and Zatanna. And I haven't figured out how I'm going to get out of this one. This I put myself in a pretty big jam. <laughs> I fucked myself good. Past just just rolled the dice. And I'm paying the price. Is that a sideshow? Was that sideshow? Yeah. Oh, man. I got the... the uh, the exclusive one with the um, axe hand. I saw, uh, what's his well, name? Maybe it's a hammer hand. Jason Aaron posted up. Why is there two Omars in the chat? Omar, you have a twin. What happened? I was going to say, who is that good looking dude there? Oh, it's me. Um, I think it's because I got kicked off somehow. Oh, okay. So you guys got annoyed with me and you kicked me off, but it was actually my... <laughs> My connection okay. kind of <laughs> freaked oh, for a minute. I guess I didn't do it right. Um, back. <laughs> don't out. Now I'm here. So I was going to suggest what you do, uh, Jess, is do the same thing I do. Is like, oh, baby, I found this at a yard sale. This lady was selling it for like $5. <laughs> I couldn't pass on $5. It's like a hot dog. <laughs> well, I, for Zatanna, I'm going to use the Han protocol, the John Han protocol. Which How's is, that? That is the 12 friends got together from the Facebook page and bought it for you as a gift. You oh, that's only, a good one. I haven't used only, that one. Yeah, you can only use that one once every two years or so. Um, if you use it too often, it it's not believable. So I need to be careful with that. I used it two years ago on my Batgirl Halloween bombshell statue. Uh, but this one... Uh, I'm going to save it for Zatanna. I think this one, she'll accept the fact I did sell some books on eBay and the proceeds were rolled into her. That's not a lie. It's the truth. So I'm going to try the truth for once and see what happens. No, I don't, never do the truth. Never do. Come on. I'm going to try and see what happens. No, lies are always better. Half-truths are better. <laughs> Half-truths. Yeah, if I told my wife like twelve guys got together online to buy me something, there she would be like, mm, "No, that's, <laughs> have they met you? Nobody <laughs> likes you that meets you. There's no way anybody bought you anything." Right? Yeah. If I told my wife twelve guys got together to buy me something, <laughs> what kind of Facebook group is that? That your guys are buying you presents? But that does happen. <laughs> <laughs> what happens to you guys? What happens to likable fellas? Is it Facebook? Yeah. You can just watch Jess. Barefoot step into like M and M's and raw meat. And stuff like <laughs> <that>. <laughs> yeah, Omni Dog. That's my fetish name. <laughs> so they can uh, they can spank me. So earlier I was talking about how uh, Will, the other guy I work with at that Torpedo, asked if we should get some hot toys, and it's because he found a, a a guy with a collection of eighty four of them. That we're gonna buy, I guess. Eighty four what? Eighty four hot toy figures. Whoa! What is that gonna set you back? I don't know. I don't know. It's weird because I mean I don't want to get too too deep into like the business side of it, but uh, one of the other guys we work with just likes to spend system of a down money. I guess you could say, right? Because mm -hmm. the drummer from System Down owns it. But me and this other guy are like, no, dude, like, the store needs to be self, self, self-sufficient self and live and die off of its own sales. So we can't do that. But now he's like, I'm going to buy 84 fucking hot toy figures. We're going to be yeah. just swimming in hot toy figures, man. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. And you have those the room for sell. that? Those things sell. Like, those things are oh, they're not cheap. I, mean, if we're but... saying, I remember a number that was kind of passed around because they were looking at this guy's collection before. But it's it's we're getting them at a, at a steal because a lot of these kind of figures are like six hundred dollars retail, at least. Yeah, and that's like aftermarket retail. Like that's not you know uh, original MSRP or anything like that. But yeah, it's gonna be cool to sell them because those I love selling I love selling uh, expensive toys and comics. <laughs> I recently set up at. Uh... One of the it's like a it's a it was a geek swap shop kind of thing. It's was, it was put together by the same guys that do our local comic sh uh, show every year. And I had a set back when I used to review toys of I don't know if you all know it's like the Yamato fantasy statues. They're the um, oh yeah the uh, like uh, Julie Bell and uh, Boris um, what is his name um, 
the fantasy artists, right? They made statues of all their stuff. They would send them to me for review, and I'm like, I didn't have any space for them, so I decided to sell them. And my brother was working with me, and he was like, who in their right mind is going to buy these half-naked lady statues for the price that you're asking? And I'm like, well, because I know what they go for, and I know what people want. And sure enough, man, there was a guy that kept, like, circling it. And <laughs> and, what, and I could tell, I'm like, oh, this motherfucker's going to buy these. He was, um, he came up, and he was like, oh, so uh, how much you want for your ladies? Like, he said it like that, right? <laughs> Creepy. Was he, was he wearing a dog mask? Oh, <laughs> a dog. I have no. I'm. I'm pretty. How much, I have you, an how much for your little girls? <laughs> <laughs> They're not little. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it was. Uh, it was interesting. Like I was like, oh, this guy's totally gonna buy these. I, I could kind of tell by the way he just kept coming around. Um, but sure enough, he did. We worked out a deal. Yeah. How many did you have? I had uh, nine of them. Yeah, wow. I had a lot of them. He he, yeah, he took all of them, and, and they did not. So cheap. I mean, um, I, I mean, know. I worked. I worked in my good deal. So, um. yeah, I had a, I had a Harley Quinn one of those that I had for a while, um, and I just ran out of room and I had to sell it. But yeah, I had one of those. I know what you're talking about. Those are cool. Boris Vallejo. That was it. Thank you, Drummond Art. Oh man, I bet those things are super crusty now. <laughs> I don't want to think. I bet they just I don't think about it. Snap off the shelf. You know, he bought them. Whatever he does with them, that's his business. <laughs> John Wilson picked up who I was imitating. Your women. How much for your women? We Blushy. want. To, yeah, <laughs> we want to buy the little girl. I also picked up one more thing. Um, this this is the limited edition of Ease. Contrary to popular belief, that is not pronounced wise. This is E's origin. And this is done by Limited Run Games. And they really are limited run. Like, they'll, they, uh, I'm crazy and I like physical copies of video games instead of digital. So that was only available digital. And now and I think they made like 3,000 of these. They were sold out within the first day. Like, it's crazy how fast those things go. And how'd you get it? Um, so, Limited Run has a thing on their website where every Friday they release usually two games and two versions of PS4 and a PS Vita of each game. And they release them in batches, like one at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and one, I think, at like 6 or 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And they they sell out. Like just about every game they release sells out. And they, um, they it's they're limited to like sometimes 500, sometimes 1,000, depending on something like this. This one was like, I think, 3,000. That's what it was, um, and then because they all, most of the time they've been releasing things like this, but they just started getting into the physical um, or the limited uh, special edition ones with big boxes and art books and things like that. Mm. But most of the times they've been releasing like little games like this. But yeah, that, that's all I picked up. That's pretty cool that you got it for your Vita. Yeah, yeah, I love him. Um, being a father to like a eight and five year old, I'm up and around a lot, so I don't really get to play console games that much. Unless it's the Super Nintendo, right? Like classic games, they love that stuff. Um, so I love handheld games because I can take them anywhere. Like that and my DS gets a lot of love. Mm. Yeah, you travel a lot too, so you probably yeah. like bringing them with you. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So uh, are we on to what we read this week? Or have we. Do we still have anything else that we bought and or are hiding from our wives? <laughs> that seems to be the theme of the show. Like, I can't tell my wife I bought this. <laughs> Please don't watch this episode. Um, no, I'm good. I didn't read anything. And oh, that was, was quick. Yeah, just to double back on the uh, <laughs> It was Scott Hanna that did the inks for uh, John ah! And J. Scott Campbell did a bunch of the covers. I forgot about that. Those fucking covers were amazing. Yeah, that's where a lot of the I think Jess has one of those statues, right? The Mary Jane one, where she's sitting uh, down in that weird position. Yeah, that one. I think that isn't that where he it comes from. That run, like yeah, the covers. J. Scott Campbell ones. Yeah, now those those go for a pretty penny because they're out of print. Don't let my wife hear that. <laughs> <laughs> She'll want me to sell them. 
I got them when they were just released, so I did okay. But uh, has the price gone up a lot then? Uh, yeah, because I was looking uh, to getting a friend one. Um, I think it, it was the Gwen Stacy one. It was it was quite a bit. It was quite mm -hmm. a bit, a lot more than what you pray pray for them. Okay, good. I'll tell her that never. <laughs> Yeah, Tyler. Those are all One Piece statues. I have a lot. Those are the Mega House Portrait of Pirates from one of the greatest mangas ever. And Tyler, you weren't here earlier, but I hate you because you're <laughs> the reason I ended up buying this stupid book. Uh, hey, and as far um, as what I, <laughs> what I read, uh, I read Invincible. I um, Story's almost over. I'm not going to spoil anything, but it's bittersweet. It's good. It's in its last story arc. It's a good, fun book. Right, right. Uh, not a lot of deep elements into it, but I, I really like it. It's a good, fun book. No, that uh, Thor book is amazing. That's like some of the best Thor. That was probably the last Thor stuff that I liked until uh, uh, the current Jason Aaron stuff. Thor? I was talking about Invisible. Were you even listening to me? <laughs> That's <laughs> what my wife feels like. <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> I was looking up that Thor information. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, Invincible is good. Um, kind of sad to see it go, but I like when a creator yeah. says, okay, that's enough. That's that's where it ends, and that's where it should end, right? Yeah. Whereas things like Superman, Flash, and X-Men will always go on, create our own things, and when the uh, creator decides, hey, it's over, no more. Somebody told Kirkman in uh, Walking Dead already. Then Did that holy <laughs> yeah, Walking I, I, Walking Dead is not as good to me as Invincible, but it's it's okay. You know? I like the new character to introduce the little uh, princess or the little Hispanic girl. I like her. I don't know. What did man. you read, Jess? I read. I read a stack of books. First, I read. Flintstones, Volume 2, which is freaking great. I loved it. I love this book. Volume 2, I read... Let's see, let me start a different pile. Superman Reborn in my Rebirth Readathon. Superwoman in my Readathon of Rebirth. And I'm sad yeah. to hear that it's getting canceled because I like this book a lot. I think it, it had a good run, though. It was I liked uh, at least the first two trades. I enjoyed. Yeah, or the first two story arcs, rather. Good. I like. Um, it, better that we get it than we didn't get it. So. Mm -hmm. Harley I mean, Quinn. Oh, go ahead. I was like, I'm surprised they didn't cancel titles earlier. Because I remember when the new 52 came out, they were axing oh. titles left and right, like around issue 8, I think. Yeah, I was just going to say issue 8 was the death knell issue for a lot like of things. Demon and Deathstroke. I can't remember the other one that got axed. But yeah, now, I mean, the, what, it lasted 18 issues, right? Superwoman and... Uh, yeah. What's the other book that's getting canned? Um, Omac was the other one from New 52. Oh, yeah, that was the other book. Well, no, from Rebirth. Wasn't there another book they're canceling? They're saying that's going to be Blue Beetle, but it hasn't been announced or like solicited yet. But Blue Beetle. Yeah, women and Latinos, man, they get no love. Carry <laughs> on, Jess. <laughs> As usual, I'm the to Coke and Snowflake in this chat. White privilege. <laughs> um, let's see. Let me do the wraparound cover for the Harley Quinn Rebirth book. Yeah. I love this because I love Harley Quinn. Um, it was great. And then in my continuing Hellboy readathon, I read Sledgehammer 44. And then I read all four Lobster Johnsons. Lobster Johnson 4. I love Lobster Johnson. You know, I started out not really liking it, and by the end, I really liked it a lot. I like his character a lot. Yeah, and I, I like all the supporting characters. I like the villains. They were it. I really enjoyed this by the end. the The first story, the first book, I wasn't that uh, knocked out by, and I think I'm going to go back and reread it because I have a better uh, sense of Lobster Johnson now, and I think I'd, I'd like it even better. 
uh, volume three, Satan Smells a Rat, which is a great title. Lobster Johnson 2, The Burning Hand. And Lobster Johnson 1, The Iron Prometheus, which I need to read again because, as I say, this one didn't knock me out, and uh, I think I was expecting something different. And I put the blame on me. I accept responsibility in not liking this book. It's not the, uh, it's not their fault. It's me. It's not them. It's me. So that's what I read. I read a stack of stuff. Uh, I only got to watch one scary movie, but I read a bunch of books. What was the movie you watched? Just out of curiosity. Um, you wouldn't think it was scary because there's no slashers in it or anything. Um, it was called Dark Song. It was a yeah. It's a. It wasn't really scary. It was, but it was cool. It had a cool ending. Um, uh, in the English countryside, this woman um, hires a guy, and it takes months to create this ceremony to um, capture or or uh, grab either an angel or a demon, and. If you get them, they owe you, uh, they need to grant you a favor. And so the whole movie is this big, long setup of what they have to go through physically to set up this incredibly complicated ceremony. Um, you know, they have to purify themselves. They do salt around this abandoned house, and they have to have food and water in the house for four months because it takes four months worth of this. So it's a super long buildup of, what they have to go through to set up the ceremony for this 15 minute ending of when they actually call up what they've been looking for. And it was, I thought it was cool. It was, Is it a British movie? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, it, um, I, as a matter of fact, the male actor had an accent so thick, I had trouble understanding him sometimes. Uh, the female actress in it was, um, I understood her fine but he had such a thick accent. I could barely make it out, but uh, I just dug the ending. I, it's not scary in the sense of, you know, like um, slashers, demons, witches being ever present. Uh, but the tension yeah. builds, the tension builds in it. So I dug it. Well, there's different kinds of horror movies, right? I mean, there's yeah. psychological and then there's jump scare. Um, I, I, I tend to like any of them. Um, my my wife and I just like maybe fifty or so little short horror films. Like we had a list to go through, and then we started just that rabbit hole of going through YouTube and finding these little short films. Some of them were good, some of them were, eh, you know, they were okay. Um, um, and then I'm trying to introduce my eight year old to a, the horror genre because by her age, I had it already been desynthesized to these things. <laughs> so, um, my wife gave a big no when I was like, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors. It's like the best horror movie ever. All right. yeah. uh, so she did let me sh show her like the uh, Brandon Fraser mummy movie because I think it's a fun movie, but it still has a little bit maybe of horror elements for a kid. Um, and she really liked it. She wants to see like all three of them. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. That's cool. It's not fun if your kids don't get scared. I mean, come on. She jumped a couple times, and she because she looked at me. She was like, "You were supposed to tell me when the jump was happening." I'm like, oh, "I forgot." <laughs> it's not scary if I tell you. <laughs> yeah, so I've been trying to watch a lot of scary stuff, but I just haven't. Um, yeah, no, Riley's gone through a lot of them. Um, I think somebody gave him a recommendation. Was it Luis? I think um, recommended a lot of movies to him. And I know the last time we talked uh, a couple weeks ago, you had you had a list of movies that uh, yeah, some right. of those movies on that list were awesome. Yeah, I was trying to get yeah, through a bunch much. of them. Yeah, I'm trying to get through them. I only have twelve more days. Isn't today the nineteenth? Yeah, and there's like twenty four hours in the day. Right? <laughs> yeah, get it right. Jeff. Who needs sleep? Who needs sleep? Yeah, who needs to read comic books? Right. Yeah, so that's I need to get on, I get on my movie watching. I need to watch uh, 
I think I want to see The Grudge. That's supposed to be good. Luis recommended The Grudge to me. And what else? There's a, uh, there's a fantastic art film called uh, a Serbian film you can always check out. Oh, I don't want to <laughs> see that. I already know about that. Big fuck, fucker. fuck you, man. I already know about that. <laughs> I ain't watching that. Uh, did, you ever what, did you ever hear about Salo? It's an older film. That one's pretty fucked up, too. How do you spell it? Up there with like, uh, I believe it's S A L O. Oh, no. I haven't the, heard of it. Is it it's from another country. I remember uh, the guy that made it ended up getting killed. Like he got mobbed. <laughs> like a fucking mob killed him. What? Seriously? Yeah, it's a pretty fucked up movie. Well, I don't need to see that. <laughs> I just want to. Be... That's what it. Yeah, Salo or the 120 Days of so- Sodom. <laughs> oh jeez. It's, uh, it's a really weird movie. Oh, I know what movie uh, I want to see. The uh, REC movie. You said the REC. Yeah, Rico yeah. You, you liked it. You like number two even better than number one, right? Um, or is that Louise? Number two, the wedding. Or I can't remember because record two was different than quarantine two. Um, actually, yeah, record two was solid. Yeah, that was a good one, and I, record three was great too. I really like. I really like those movies. Okay, those good. Are really good. Maybe that's what I'll I'll watch next because I hear those are really good. Yeah. Yeah. So I need to watch. Double XX on Netflix. I do need to watch that. That is on my Netflix to watch, by the way. The Clarknado. That looked. That looked like it's like a. I think an anthology of horror. Oh, what is it called? It's two two X's like XX. It's on oh, Netflix. okay. I wanna I wanna see that because I think it's an anthology and I really like those because um, that's what like VHS is and what was the okay. other ones? Uh, VHS, Super VHS, VHS two. Um, Tales of Halloween, which actually had some pretty good ones in there. Yeah, I like anthologies. I'm I'm a big anthology nut. Like me hooked on those kind of things. Now Benjamin is telling me that I need to see the original Grudge Japanese. Uh, uh, where do I pick Juan? that up? Where Where Juan? do I find that? I don't know. He just says make sure you see the original Japanese film. Yeah, it's called Juon. Um, yeah, I think it's available through Netflix, or okay. I don't know if it's streaming, but if you still believe in these things called DVDs, you could get oh. them like that. <laughs> uh, Nate's um, Grace, I just got done talking about Dark Song, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Just, that's what I just saw. <laughs> she said, Salo stays with you. Yeah, it did. Oh, Antichrist, I forgot about that. That's another fucked up film. <laughs> <laughs> I, love that, I love this one from horror to like fucked up films. Yeah, <laughs> I, just wanna, I don't want to throw mention, up. I just, you just had to mention the Serbian film, didn't you? Yep. <laughs> I just want to. Well, no, because you guys just talk about scary movies and horror movies during Halloween. I like to watch. Uh, I like to watch fun Halloween movies during this time of year. I watched uh, the Halloween Tree, which was a uh, uh, animated movie based on a uh, Ray Bradbury short story. Oh yeah. Oh, that sounds cool. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful. It's all about uh, uh, how other countries celebrate Halloween. So you get things like uh, the Day of the Dead and, and and cool stuff like that. Hey, Benjamin Pinedo uh, said uh, it's on Hulu. The Jew, the original Jew on. He thinks. Oh, okay. I need to do Hulu. So that sounds perfect. Yeah, they have and a lot of Criterion also- collections there. Sorry, Gabe. No, it's cool. This time of year, I also like to watch uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. It's a Halloween movie. I don't care what anybody says. That's a Halloween <laughs> movie. And next week, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to uh, Disneyland for my birthday. Nice. So if anybody's going to show up at Disneyland October 25th, that's a, that's a Wednesday. I'll be there. So you can hit a, hit a brother up. <laughs> but I always like to go this time of the year because... Disneyland uh, decorates like the Haunted Mansion and other rides in uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, cool. Like the, the Haunted House. It's not ghosts and goblins and, and, and stuff like that. It's like it's, it's Jack and Zero and Sally and, you know, Oogie Boogie and stuff like that. Yeah, Disney World. I don't know about Disney, but in Disney World, they, they really soup it up there for, during Halloween. That's when we went a couple of years ago. Like everything is Halloween. It's all. It's really awesome. Uh, 
I didn't. I'm fuck. I'm trying to think if I watched any movies recently. I've been kind of. It's getting harder and harder to get the kids to sleep, so we end up not watching anything at at night. Uh. No, just South Park. I'm gonna catch up on South Park. Really, that's about it. But. I heard South Park is really damn good this season. I haven't I haven't seen it in years. Oh, it's been good. Like the last, I mean, it's always been good, but the last, I would say, probably the, the last five years, it's just been some of just the best satire, you know, comedy TV series that you're ever gonna watch. Yeah, I see shows getting canceled left and right on Comedy Central, and South Park's still strong. So what's the topic? topic horror movies. <laughs> horror movies. Yeah, horror movies, apparently. Salo. Salo, a Serbian film. <laughs> Gabe getting uh, Invincible and Thor confused. <laughs> uh, yeah, so recently, uh, thanks to uh, Brooks on the, on, the, on the Facebook group, he posted up the newer... Love that guy. Editions. Yeah, that dude. I don't, know who, told- I don't know who spends people money more, uh, Jess or Brooks, you know? Uh, me, yeah, like he's always telling us about eBay deals, and he's always like, "Oh, here's the solicitations." And I remember, like, a, a few months ago, I was like, "Dude, if I ever meet you, I'm gonna have to buy you a lap dance." She would make me so happy. Like, I had a shitty day at work, and the solicitations kept popping up, and I'm like, "Yes!" I think me and Gabe were the only one excited about like Deadpool and X Force, which is really X Force Volume Two Omnibus. Yep, yep. I can't wait for that. That's coming out in like a couple weeks too. I yeah, think. yeah. It's out this month, I think. But uh, yeah, even better. I mean, with the newer books that that Brooks alerted us to. Um, for everybody who's watching or in the chat, I have the links and the description of what books we're going to be talking about, and the link to the new Hatchet catalog. Oh yeah, Sam. Uh, but one of the cooler things I didn't think it was ever going to happen for some reason. I just had it heart set that this was never going to happen. Is uh, Garth Ennis Punisher Max? Yeah. Volume one omnibus has been officially announced. Or That's got to be a two volume omnibus collection. Oh, oh yeah, it is. It is. Um, but we don't. There's no details really on what's going to be in it, but we can suspect knowing omnibus is. Probably- I think. I think there is details. I think it, it showed up on Amazon, if I'm not mistaken, and I think Brooks had that link too. I know it's on Amazon, but I didn't know I had the description of what was in there. I thought I just said something like, "Oh no, nine hundred. It's on the. It's on uh the solicitations for Marvel. For yeah, January. The hatchet. It's got yeah. yeah. No, no, the actual Marvel solicitations that websites put out. Um, it shows the detailed information of all these omnibuses really? that we're talking oh. about. Yeah. And they oh. all come out the same month, by the way. Yeah, Weapon born X. one through four and Punisher one through thirty. That's it. Yep. So it's got oh, more in there, that's the best. Yeah, that is an awesome uh, story. And that's dude, how you that pick off a max. A day one buy. That's a day one buy for sure, dude. I own the damn hardcovers and I'm buying it. <laughs> Well, I know uh, kind of uh, I'm not place to announce it, but I know uh, Riley might have a special deal going on or a special uh, – he's going to have something going on with his hardcovers later, later, later. But Riley's going Riley's to get rid of his hardcovers. So if anybody wants them, uh, he yeah. things after the second volume has been announced. And that includes volumes – what is it, four and five? That's the really hard ones to get? Four and four, five, yeah. Four and five are the – yeah, I think four was the biggest one, the big whale. Yeah. Right. Um, but so that'll, those, check out the Facebook group because you know people are going to start just dropping those things on the group pretty soon. Oh yeah. It's, um, the one I'm really excited about is the continuation of uh, Jason Aaron's Wolverine. So we're getting a volume two called Wolvie Goes to Hell. Yeah. And Jess, you got the solicits up. I think it can it includes Amazing Sp- or Astonishing Spider-Man and Wolverine, right? Uh, let's see. I had it up. Well, shit, if it's solicited, I'm going to find a solicitation and see what's in there. It's it's out. Uh, out, out. I'm assuming that's the 2000... Well, News Around just put it up two days ago, so let's see. Yeah, there we go. That, that's how you can find it. Um, but it's got the remaining Jason Aaron stories, which everybody thought they're never going to do, right? Right, yeah. But no way, no way. And holy shit. <laughs> Not... Like, the first one's been out of... It took forever for the first one to go out of print, man. That thing was discounted for years. Like, I think two years I've, I saw it at conventions for, like, 30 bucks. The cheapest I ever saw it was, like, 25 And then just like that, it disappeared and it went out of print. So people started, you know, seeking it. And I see it selling 
anywhere from like seventy five to a hundred dollars. Um, so yeah, I it's got interesting mine, that it came back. I got mine and it, for like sixty bucks, like a, a year ago. Let's see. The Clark NATO said it also includes Schism, which it does. I can't find the solicitations, but it includes yeah the rest of the Jason Aaron run. And I know Riley was upset that it didn't include Amazing, yeah, Amazing X Men one through six, which is kind of a follow up uh, to the Wolverine story, which is where he goes and finds Nightcrawler. And Nightcrawler comes back to life after dying during the second coming. Oh, that's a good uh, that's, a, that's a good run right there. But, yeah, the game, but it's 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 not included in the Omni. Oh well. Um, so I was I was happy to see that and the Weapon X Omnibus because I know it's not one that's really liked, but I really like Frank Terry's Weapon X storyline. Right. It, oh. it it was a different take on the characters, and it was um, it's the there was one story called what was it called like Sinister List, which is kind of like a take on Schindler's List. There's like a mutant concentration camp, and they're offing all these B and not even B listers, but like C and D listers, like Maggot and Leech, and some of those characters have come back now. But like concentration camp, and all these mutants are going there. Mister Sinister has a list of mutants that get to stay alive. Um, but I, I really thought that was a um, a fun book, not to be taken too seriously. Um, so I can't believe out of all the storylines, like, I mean, that's up there, I guess, with Mutant X, as far as, like, something that should be collected in an omnibus format, as yeah. far as, like, X-Men titles. So, just real quick, uh, I found this solicitation. I put it in the, uh, the Omni Bros chat. So, if, if Jess or somebody, if you need to look it up. You gotta scroll all the way down to the very bottom of the article. But there we could see what's in the books. So I didn't, I didn't realize that was already put out. And everybody in the chat or watching the video, I updated the link in the description for this video so you guys can, you know, save that or reference that as well. Because oh, yeah, there's Wolverine Goes to Hell Omnibus. Yeah. So uh, I'm trying to figure out what's the difference between Wolverine Goes to Hell and Wolverine Weapon X. It's I just told you. <laughs> <I know. laughs> he's not listening damn, to you tonight damn dude I was like is my mic on okay uh, <laughs> no the weapon X uh, has nothing to do oh, with so it's literally world. weapon X it's literally the uh, Marvel comic yeah. event. Okay, like cool. it's going to collect uh, Frank Terry's Wolverine uh, issues that he worked on which I think mm -hmm. it might be a total of like 10 or so but it's going to uh, include like the weapon X miniseries and then the weapon X ongoing series which I think is like it lasted 28 issues and it's just, it's like, you know, Wild Child and Marrow and all these characters that um, include, like, the Weapon X and the Weapon X. That in the spotlight, but um, he makes them kind of interesting, and I really like, I, I, I like that story. I know a lot of people don't because, you know, they killed Maggot. Uh, I can't imagine too many people missing Maggot. Shut up, dude. Come on. I love <laughs> <laughs> I was paying attention to that. Okay, I like that. <laughs> God, I'm so man. Like, I loved Maggot when he first came out. I remember what, you, what the yeah. hell's wrong with you? Nobody oh. says that. Not even the guy. That, not even Scott Lobdell says he likes no. Maggot. He <laughs> created the character. Maggot. It was Joe Madera who, who designed it and did those issues. It was great. Yeah, I but his, his weird he has, accent. He has two guys from his stomach. That's awesome. You know, I usually agree with you, Gabe, but I'm going to have to uh, <laughs> disagree on this one. Maggot sucked. <laughs> Great, dude. If I ever, ever, it'll never happen. If somehow Marvel said, hey, Gabe, you want to write an X-Men book? I go, only if I could bring Maggot back. <laughs> okay, man. Uh, to each their own. I'm going to bring Maggot back. Oh. <laughs> um, so I'm looking through the solicitations, too. Another one that me and Jess talked about just real quick before we started the show. Uh, the Carnage Omnibus. Hardcore. Yeah, I'm excited that's, about that's a, that one. It's weird that we're getting that and not a Venom Omnibus, right? Yeah. Exactly. Why, why don't we have like a Venom Lethal Protector Omnibus with all those miniseries from like the early 90s that leads into, was it the Daniel Way series? Or even like the... Uh, mm -hmm. the Daniel Agent Way series is the fucking Omnibus, dude. Bad. Uh, yeah, the Rick Remender series was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised I didn't get an omnibus. Um, I wasn't going to get the Carnage one, but there were a couple people that were like, no, you need to if if only for the 2016 series. 
So I was reading a little of reviews online, and I mean, it's a lot of love and praise. So I may have to check that out. Well, yeah, that, and then there's a mini series too in there that's supposed to be really good. Well, that was my first, uh, the first, my first introduction to uh, Creighton Crane or Creighton Crane, Clayton Crane. Jesus, his name is weird. Um, oh yeah, that guy's awesome. I love his artwork. I love this X Force. Yeah, he did Venom versus Carnage. Uh, he did Carnage. I think he did that Carnage USA minimum Carnage. I know he did a bunch of the covers and stuff like that. Yeah, that art is is out of control. I love his stuff. Um, yeah, so I'll probably end up picking that one up, even though it's weird not to include like uh, Amazing Spider Man 360 through 363 in it, right? Which is like the yeah. first appearance of Cletus Cassidy and then first appearance Carnage. So I, I hate know. it they do that though sometimes, like that. Um, the recent Punisher book that came out that was like his first appearance. Yeah, I, I skipped on that. Did you end up getting that one? No, because it's all it's all like jibber jabber together, and I don't I like this stuff that's more or less. It's not I'm not you know I'm not going to try and lie to myself say it's like a concise a concise storyline, but at least there's some kind of theme to it. You know, it's just all the mini series. Right, it's a collection of all his previous appearances. Yeah, I don't like when it's just like, well, here's a two two issue arc here, and then yeah, one I'm not a fan of those omnibus. I'm the, I've never been a I don't know if you guys are like the 90s omnibus they came out with or the number the dc ones and the dc zeros omnibus oh yeah no i'm not into those because i'm a i'm a completist so i have to have you know everything even if it's just dark hawk number one i have to have the complete dark hawk um not sure why i use that as an example but if you're hoping for an actual dark i'm hawk. hoping for fucking dark hawk and a johnny blaze and danny kitch <laughs> but 90s baby that's where i first saw mark texaria's artwork man i love that guy that guy doesn't do enough comic books all right so what uh, else are you guys excited about which one has schism oh it's uh wolverine goes to hell has schism because people are asking about that yeah. uh what else is on here um i think those are the big omnis that are coming out that month we talked about uh, X Men Legion Quest, right? That's the prequel, or the yeah. that's the right before Age of Apocalypse. Um, right. So that's they're, re an Omni. they're redoing that. Wait, it's getting an Omni, or is it a well, hardcover? A hardcover, seventy-five dollar hardcover. Holy shit! Yeah, that's awesome. So I thought that might be a small Omni. But it's it like one, didn't say omnibus. It just said it's Legion like Quest. Inferno and Mutant Massacre. Yeah, yeah, like one of those things. Exactly. It's an omnibus uh, minus the word omnibus on the spine. Exactly. Complete, completely fine with that. As an X Man hardcover completist, that makes me happy. <laughs> okay, good. That's why we're here. You're like, yeah, man, Bishop's Crossing. Got to get it. Dude, I, I own Bishop's Crossing. The thing that pissed me off is them trying to fucking pad out Marvel Legacy number one and sell it as a hardcover for forty dollars. Like, they're making it two hundred and sixty-four pages, so they're including Marvel Legacy one, like the the primer pages, and I don't know what the hell Foom Magazine is, but it's oh, that's, yeah, 40 friends bucks. Of that's the Friends of Marvel, um, Friends of Old Marvel. Yeah, that's what it is. Oh, uh, okay. Late 60s, early 70s magazine. Yeah. Yeah. It just uh, rem kind of thing. reminds me a little bit of like what DC did. It's back uh, everybody had a, uh, uh, like a fanzine, but that was like Marvel's official fanzine kind of thing. Right. Um, let's see. Um, I also see on here, oh, I'm, God, probably, I mean, I'm probably the only person who might care about this, maybe Omar. But there's a uh, it's a trade, but it's uh, X Force and Cable Onslaught Rising trade paperback. That will good. That will go good right along my Cable and X Force Volume Two Cable and X Force Classic. Yeah, so complete this again. This is the uh, Jeff Loeb stuff, and it has like Steve Scrooge art and like Ian Churchill art and all that stuff. So it's all like the upcoming like Onslaught because it'll fit right there with like us, I think. So it's, yeah, it's uh, it's the next. I love that they're doing the continuation of trade paperbacks for people that have been collecting trade paperbacks like forever, right? Because the last Cable and X Force Classic 
Volume 2, I believe that came out probably six or seven years ago. And they solicited a Volume 3, but then they canceled it because, you know, I guess nobody gave a shit about Cable and X-Force. But now that the movie's coming out, they're not calling it Cable and X-Force Volume 3. They're calling it what you said. Onslaught. <laughs> New Mutants. New Mutants is getting an epic, and it fills in that slot of New Mutants class in between New Mutants Classics number seven, which is the final uh, run of New Mutants in the classic line, and it fills it in between the Rob Liefeld uh, New Mutants, the I think it's just called Cable and the New Mutants, that was not collected in the omnibus. It's the hardcover, like Marvel premiere hardcover, that collects New Mutants 86 through like 95, leaving or 96, leaving out the Extinction Agenda storyline. That's cool. So yeah, nerds like me are excited. They're like, oh shit, I get everything in fucking collected edition. Yeah, dude. No, I'm all over that cable and uh, that cable onslaught because I just love. I loved uh, Jeff Loeb's run on Cable back then. That stuff was great. Yeah, it was good. It was a fresh take on the character. I remember he brought um, what's her name, uh, Lee Forster, the mm-hmm. the blonde. Yeah, I was a big fan of his run too, and I love uh, Steve Scrooge. I, that guy was one of the best comic book artists, and um, sadly he went on to do what uh, screen, uh, not screenplays. Uh, um, what did he Story do? Storyboard. Storyboards, yeah, for the Matrix, right? There's nothing wrong with that, man. Nothing wrong with that. Oh yeah, more money, right? So more power to him. It's and... The Matrix. He he worked on the greatest movie ever made. Okay, well, I don't know about that, but um... <laughs> no, I love the Matrix. I love the Matrix. The Matrix made me believe in Keanu Reeves. Actually, was a go- okay dude. Like it was a bit long before I knew Keanu Reeves was a good guy. I just didn't think the guy could act. Oh, oh my god. You ever saw like Parenthood or like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? Come on. No, he was perfect in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and in Point Break. Perfect. <laughs> he can pass those roles. Um, uh, actually, I, uh, Steve Brooks got a new uh, ongoing, or I don't know if it's an ongoing series or not, but a new comic book that just came out this week where he's writing and drawing it. Yeah, I saw that. Forgot the name of it, though. Shit. I saw it last night. But it's beautiful because that guy's art's amazing. But you look at like his old like X Men or not X Men but X Men stuff like during like Age of Apocalypse and stuff like that, and you just see people just posting it on the board and talking about how ugly it is and terrible it was and stuff like that. I kind of like he had a very uh, clean Joe Quesada style, like a uh, without all the shot. I love his uh, Gambit series, like that first Gambit series he did. Oh, with Fabian Nicieza? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was so good. That was an actually a good storyline. All right, Jess, what are you excited about? Uh, Divinity 3 gets a large hardcover from Valiant. I love Divinity. Um, so I'm excited for that one. Um, the, and I saw that uh, The Sentry is getting a reprint. That book is a great book. It's been out of print and hard to find forever, that trade paperback. So I just saw that. Um, the, the I know the century. Century was like so hard to find. I thought it was. Yeah, hmm. uh, you talking about the Paul Jenkins? Yeah, century? yeah. I uh, I didn't. I thought it was still in print. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought it was out of print. Okay, well, maybe I'm wrong. No, I believe it. I just didn't. I just that's just uh, something that just. I don't think anybody's mentioned the century since like Dark Avengers. Right. I just remember really liking that book when I finally got it. Um. For any, let's see. I guess maybe people already knew about the Moon Knight by Bendis, oversized hardcover, because those two books are hard to find. That's yeah. getting one volume that's coming out in hardcover. Yeah. Um, that's been hard to find forever. Um, let's see. I think that's it for my list, because uh, Carnage was the one that I was really interested in. There is a question. Um, but, uh, uh, do you need to um, read the first Aaron Wolverine Omni to understand this new Wolvie Goes to Hell release? I don't think so. Because the first Wolverine was the return of Weapon X and all that thing. And that kind of had an ending. And it led to the Wolverine and the X-Men books. Wolverine Goes to Hell is more about his quest for like to find Nightcrawler. And finds Puck. Oh, I can't remember. It's been a long time, but, but I, don't, I don't think you need to read it. I mean, it's not 
not that confusing. Yeah, I think it was pretty self-contained for the most part. But I remember uh, Jay Lee did the art for it, or at least I remember him doing the covers. He did the, he did the covers, yeah, yeah, he did the covers. And I think it was still Ron Garney doing some of the internal art. And there was somebody else that I really liked, too. I think it was the Italian. Ah, what is that guy's name? Damn it. Uh, anyway, the art was nice. Hmm. Yeah, no, that's it for me. I, I know there's a... Um... there There's a lot of Marvel books that I'm excited about. I'm not going to lie. I'm just, just looking at this list. Holy shit, that's going to be a, an expensive month. Dude, they're Which releasing month? four omnibus. Like, January, it says January of 2018, right? Well, that's the, that's the solicitation, but that's not when the books are being released. Wolverine goes uh, to hell, goes on sale in May. Oh, the solicits, right. But usually they're kind of close. Wolverine goes well, usually there. solicits are about three months out. So if it's January, February, March. No, but things like, like, like high dollar stuff, like statues and omnibus and things like that, they usually give it... Um, three, mo- three or four months. I know sometimes there's delays too. More times. Yeah, well, to- Weapon X, the return omnibus, that goes on sale May 15th also. Um, Punisher Max, that also goes on sale May 15th. Uh, so you're right, that month is going to be expensive. God, when is the car- when is Carnage game. release? Ah, you're you're in luck. Carnage releases April 2018. Oh, okay, so. good. <laughs> so it gives you one break. So there's three, but still, that's three omnibus. Like, but so that's that's the Carnage price. Is what is like the the spark of the fire? Is the every other fucking omnibus that's coming out for May. Yeah, I wonder why they don't. Their marketing department doesn't space them out, right? They know there's a huge market and a huge demand for these things. Why not space them out and give people a break, like a little breathing room? Why do you have to buy them all at once? (laughs) (laughs) Because if I if I don't, everybody else in the goddamn fucking Facebook group will, and then they'll show me pictures, and I'm like, I knew I should have bought it. Now it's sold out, and it's not trades. No, I feel you, dude. No, I'm, I, I've, I've been in the same <laughs> way with it, too. Like, Do I really need Road World Hulk and Planet Hulk all at the same time? Yes. Okay, I'll get it. Then. Fuck no, you don't, but you're going to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so the other book I'm really excited about, I know Riley, Riley would uh, feel me with this one, is uh, The New Mutants is getting a collection. Not the epic collection I was talking about, The Curse of the Valkyries, that connects the missing books. <laughs> But it's the one that was done by Munoz. What are their names? Munoz. And um, it's the one that they only collected the first six issues of. And there were only 13 issues. And then Yost and um, Kyle came came in and started doing their X-23 new X-Men run. And yeah, it's New Mutants Back to School, the complete collection. So it collects 1 through 13. And that is uh, Nuncio de Phillips... And Christina Weir's um, New Mutants run. So previously they had collected the first six issues, but for some reason they didn't collect the last uh, seven, and then just started collecting the the ongoing New X Men books because it was oh that's right it was retitled after House of M to New X Men. So it's pretty cool that they're going back and doing that because that's a mini series I didn't think anybody besides me and Riley were excited about getting. So it's nice to see Marvel, Marvel's collection department do things like this because I think a couple of them working in that department are fanboys themselves. Mm. So, uh, what was it? What, what's getting collected of New Mutants? New Mutants. So there was a. It was a mini series. Um, only published as a solicited as an ongoing series. It was called New Mutants Back to School. It had the original oh, New okay. Mutants coming back, okay. and then House of House of M happened, so they had to name the name, rename it, and they renamed it New X Men right after Grant Morrison's New X Men was over. Okay, so they started calling this title New X Men and renumbered re, renumbered it to Number One. Uh, so previously they had collected the first six issues of this New Mutants book, and now they're collecting all thirteen in a complete collection, along with the little mini stories from X Men Unlimited forty two and forty three. Mm, okay, but th- those were good books. I really liked them. I need uh, reprints of New Mutants uh, classic trades, one through seven. I need those to get reprinted through uh, Epic Collections or something. 
Well, they lost done those one. in the flood. Oh, they didn't. I'm so, yeah, I'm sorry, one through seven, I lost in the flood. Yeah, they've done one. Right. Like Was volume the... one came out. Okay. Um, of epic, epic volume one came out, and that collects a little more than what the classics did. Classic volume one did. Okay. Um, and then the next classic. Or the next epic one is the one I was telling you about, the Valkyrie one, and that collects the later, the last part of like Lee Simonson's run. Okay. okay. Did you guys see the prices on these omnibus? One twenty-five, right? Uh, well, not really. I mean, a couple of them are. I thought it looked like they were a hundred. Punisher Max is a hundred. Oh, uh, good, good. Wolverine Ghost of Hell is a hundred. Um, but then Weapon X is 125 and Carnage is 125. Which mm. you know, what's the page that count? One, that one kind of hurts because it's Carnage. He's not. He's not. You get Carnage. That's 125. But yet Wolverine and Punisher is 100. You know. I think. What you know, what what's the page count on them though? Uh, we talking about significantly a lot more or just like 20 pages? Let's Weapon see. X: The Return is 1,280 pages. That's a big yeah. fucking book. Yeah, that's why it's 125. Uh, Carnage is uh, uh, 1168, so 1,168. Okay, because the other one, the weapon, the Wolverine Goes to Hell can't be any more than 1,000 because it, there's not that much more to collect. It's a little less than 1,000. It's uh, 984. Okay. And uh, Punisher is 864. But again, I, I mean, to me, page count doesn't matter. Like, I don't. I don't do the math that way, but it's just one of those things where you just look at it and you're like, whoa, like 100, 125, 125. Yeah. But I'll get them all, so I don't know why. I'm, <laughs> like I'm going to get them on the first day at half off and then complain about IST not sending it 30 seconds later. Oh, no, wait. You know what? I'll no, just order them from the store and get them be, that Tuesday. You'll be getting them that day with free shipping and five days before the rest of us. And you can just go on the group and say, suckers, suck it. I got these books already. <laughs> You're just ordering them. Yeah. Even, uh, I know, because I know I ordered the Infinity box set through Torpedo. You I'm going to be in for half a too. crazy. Really? <laughs> yeah. What did I'm that getting set, that. What did that set you back, dude? Like, It's like 250 Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, it retails, at, it retails at 5 but... I'm gonna get it for half off at. Ah, I'm fucking with you, dude. I ain't nobody to judge. I pay like 175 for that big motherfucker back there. So <laughs> <laughs> you're telling the wrong guy. <laughs> I know, man. Glass houses, bro. Glass houses. <laughs> we'll throw crack rocks in your glass house or whatever. Oh my god, dude! I forgot. I I forgot to mention that. Uh, so, you know, I like collecting the by Shoujo Marvel figures, and I'm like, I don't need the Street Fighter ones. And then I saw that they announced Chun Li in her Street Fighter V outfit. I'm sorry, this goes back to my home. And I'm like, oh, shit, I pre ordered it. And I'm like, well, I guess I better get some of the other ones. And I did. Because I'm stupid, because I'm a completist, and now oh, I gotta hey, get let's, all of them. Let's see, a better, let's see a better picture of that. Yeah, I just need to see your softcore barns, ladies. Yeah, I need to see that. Um, So, this is Poison. And if anybody knows anything about poison from Final Fight, it, this is actually a oh. dude. Oh, gross! Yeah, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> I think in the American version it changed. Uh, and then I got Cammy. Because Americans can't handle that. <laughs> they can't handle <laughs> penises. <laughs> like this one. And I ended up getting uh, Yuri. Uh, this is one of those yard sale finds, by the way, Jess. I was talking about earlier. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> way to pick at those pickers. Way, yeah. way, way to put that on record through YouTube. <laughs> uh, and Omar, that third party. Uh, uh, Meg? Uh, Megatron. Who, uh, what company put it out? Oh, that's Make Toys. Oh, Make Toys they, is pretty cool. They Ooh. are amazing. Uh, yeah, this is the reformatted because... series. I don't collect Transformers really, but I do listen to a lot of Transformer third party podcasts for some reason. This guy like Oh I'm sorry, not make toys. These are mastermind creations. That's who did this. Oh those. MMC is good shit, dude. Yeah, I like MMC. Yeah, they're they that's that's beautiful. I mean you know, third I remember when third party toys um so Jess, I don't know if you know, um third party toys are people like me and Gabe making toys. 
for fans like me and Gabe. Oh, really? Yeah. So what these comp they're not even companies, right? I think it started like many years ago, about 10 years ago. I remember seeing third party of like characters that have ever been made toys of like, um, started maybe in like somebody's basement somebody had a 3d printer and so i started making pieces for existing transformers and then we did an episode on how legal it is because it's completely illegal <laughs> sadly because <laughs> you're taking the character likenesses and so the other base i mean you have huge companies met like massively making these things and charging you know a pretty good chunk of change um so they're not really bootleg toys they're more like fan toys for fans so by legal rights remember when i said this guy's you know obviously this is megatron from the idw but they can't oh, legally call it megatron. yeah that's why you were saying that so they it would be like us making our getting like so, making our own not making our own comics but making our own hardcovers of series that don't have hardcovers yet well, and then sell them wasn't there oh, okay. a guy that, that popped up somewhere selling an omnibus of peter david's like x factor run and it was like an actual omnibus size, like over, like oversized hardcover. That'd be kind of cool. And, <laughs> and, and people, yeah, it was on the Facebook group and people were asking him like, I know, cause I was one of those assholes that asked him like, where the hell did you get this? Hmm. Because they never, they never made oversized hardcovers of those to make an omnibus out of. Oh man, they, man, I would love so an it omnibus. Was, it was either somebody printed it and made this omnibus or i mean but it looked legit because remember there were there was also that miss marvel omnibus that dropped out of nowhere for, on ebay like in europe somewhere and i think a couple of the guys on our facebook group ended up with it uh hang on i gotta call my daughter you guys go on i'll, I'll be right back all right man what the uh, uh what did that megatron set you back like what 75 bucks uh yeah this one was um 90 okay it was 90 um, it wasn't that bad because I collect I collect the IDW stuff. They're down there, the Lost yeah. the Lost Light crew. Oh, that's badass, dude! I've been wanting to get like third party uh, transformer stuff. I only have like one masterpiece. I have masterpiece Soundwave, but I, I I swore third them off, dude, because I'm like no, because I, I know my <laughs> collecting personality. I'm like if I get one, you know, the motherfuckers, and I did. Yeah, no, that's a problem. But if I get one Lost Light, I gotta get the whole fucking crew. That's why I told you guys a couple episodes back, man. It's a good thing I'm not addicted to like hookers and blow. I would have been dead in my twenties. Yeah, I know what you mean, dude. I know what you mean. So yeah, th those are the books I'm very excited about. There was another couple of uh, little announcements here and there. Like we're continuing. I'm, I love that they're continued the epic stuff. Because remember, like the epic line when it first started, there were only four epic line, like four books that were epics, and that was like. Uh, Thor, Captain America, Iron Man, and um, Captain America, Iron Man, Thor. I don't think it was Avengers. It was like uh, it was Spider Man. It was one or Fantastic Four, and then they just kind of blew up because when they first announced them, they were like, "We're only going to release four. And we'll see how well these sell." Oh man! And, and now it's like there's an epic of everything just about. Uh, so yeah, they're uh, J Rock's in the group. Gray Rocks in the chat is asking who writes and draws Carnage. So I'm guessing he's probably asking about the current stuff. Uh, I know Seb Wells did the mini the mini series, and I haven't read the new stuff, but I was just told it's really really good. Um, and it's another writer I wasn't familiar with. I know Del Mundo does the, the fucking badass covers. He's the guy that did like the Weird World Weird War uh, covers for uh, Secret War. Yeah. Um, so it looks like Peter Milligan, Zeb Wells. Chris Yost, Colin Bunn, and Kevin Shinicky? Shinick. Oh, Gary Conway and, and uh, Jerry Duggan. They're the ones that wrote the new Carnage series. That's right. That's right. Jerry Conway. Um, Man, that's cool. That's like old school Spider-Man writer right there. So I may have to I'm, – I'm probably – I mean, $125 on – you know, buying it on a blind is kind of expensive, though. I want it just for, like, the other miniseries, like Carnage USA and – uh, Venom versus Carnage, like the uh, the Clayton Crane stuff, but yeah, I was I'm, I'm a big fan. Of it. Like, All right, cool. I got Deadpool versus Carnage. That's kind of fun, and then the new series and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, Jerry Conway, uh, Mike Perkins. I think did the first couple issues of that Carnage series. Let me see. I'm looking it up right now. 
Mike Perkins. But I love the idea that they're putting out, um, I guess, upgraded versions of these out of print books, especially like the Punisher Max stuff. And like, yeah, uh, I'm glad they're listening to us, right? Because obviously they know that there is demand for these things if people are buying them. And I'm just glad they're collecting Born. I have I have all those hardcovers, but I'm one of those idiots that's probably gonna sell no. them and and get them again because I, I, never, I love that run. I never was able to find a uh, hardcover for Born, and I love that series just because I really love Derek Robertson's art and just how yeah. fucked up that story was, where it's basically uh punisher frank castle like almost willed you know willed his family being murdered because he wanted a he wanted a war to fight just to basically sacrifice his family too yeah and i like how you know, crazy it's, it's he kind of makes him you know? oh yeah well because it's, it's a vietnam story and he's like you know killing other soldiers who are being assholes and and, and stuff like that you know so, so i think one guy was I might be completely mixing this up with some other Vietnam movie, but I believe like one of the soldiers in his troop was trying to rape a Viet Cong lady and he just drowns him in like in the swamps, you know, and stuff oh, like that. Yeah, what was that? Casualties of War, maybe? Right. Every other Vietnam, Vietnam movie is always about just about like that. most of <laughs> those. Yeah. Um, but it, that was gritty. Did you ever read his um, Nick Fury? His Fury Max? The one with Derek Robertson as well on the art? Yeah. Or do you mean the the more current Nick Fury? No, no, the, the Garth Ennis and Derek Robertson run. No, I haven't. Okay. No. Oh, yeah. It's it's pretty gritty, and but it's good. I liked it just as much. I just bought the uh, the Fury Max off of uh, Luis off the off the groups. I'm waiting for that in the mail. Is that which one? Is that my War Gone By? Yeah, the War Gone By one. Yeah. Oh, I haven't read that one. It kind of uh, because one of my favorite. Punisher series, like my my one favorite Punisher series, Punisher Max, and I think that's right, where yeah. gone by mixes in with that as well, or leads up into that too. Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's all it's all it's all in the same like universe or Max universe. That's what, yeah. I love that Jason Aaron Punisher. Love it. Yeah. That's the best that's bullseye nice. ever. Oh man, just the part where like Bullseye was just like sleeping on his on his family's grave and stuff like that. And takes the but, wife and daughter and stuff out for picnic and the stuff is so creepy. Better than the Colin Farrell uh, Bullseye. <laughs> so, yeah, he had, he, had, he had the scar on his forehead. But, yeah. Oh god, I hated that movie. Uh, <laughs> Yo, know, Jason Aaron, man, I'm like that's why it surprised me that they didn't do a Wolverine. Volume two it took him this long because everything else he's done by Marvel has been collected in an omnibus format or a hardcover or oversized hardcover. Uh, so I'm sure we're gonna get a Thor. I mean, there is no way in hell that Marvel does not cash in on the Jason Aaron name and Mighty Thor. Oh yeah, they might. Be, and we're probably gonna give him gonna, more residuals before he leaves Marvel. And though, and he'll probably do two, you know, two omnis out of that. I can't wait for that, especially if they put in an Unworthy Thor in one of those Omnis. would be great. Yeah, uh, you know they will. I mean, they usually do. <sighs> All right, so let's see. What else do we got going on? Uh, let's just throw it out to the, let's throw it out to the chat. And, hey, throw out some questions. You want to ask us some questions about whatever. Whether it's about collecting or life or advice or, or whatever. <laughs> Save that for the Valentine's Day show. We could do that pretty soon, too. Don't look into that. <laughs> Time doesn't fly that fast, man. No. No, it'll be it'll be Valentine's Day out of nowhere. All right. John Wilson says the Daredevil movie director's cut wasn't too bad. You want all the Coolio footage? <laughs> I don't I don't know. I, I I saw that movie in theaters, and that was the only time I saw it. And I almost—I was working I in the movie theater when that came out. <laughs> I remember I wanted to walk out <laughs> like halfway through it. I'm like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I was fine with the movie. Uh, I mean, it is what it is, but I just can't get past the part where they're fighting on the uh, the seesaw. Oh, that's a good question, uh, Gary Glasso asked, because I'm wondering that too. 
Are the they're, Baltimore they're, Vanillas? They're standard size. The Baltimore ones, they're standard size. Uh oh. On B is asking uh, what got you into collecting omnis and statues. Um, man, I think what got me, I, I've talked a little bit about this, was uh, my first omnibus was when Uncanny X Men was released, probably, I guess, 10 years ago, a little over 10 years ago. I refused to buy omnibuses because I was like, no, I've got the comics. I'm fine with that. And then I found it for $30 used and I bought it. And then I bought everything else since then because <laughs> it's, I have a collect, <laughs> I have an addicting personality <laughs> um, or th not everything else. I, I get the things that I like. I usually, um, I usually buy the things that I like, but I like a lot of things. So that's my problem. Um, but that was, a, that was my first one. That Uncanny X-Men, the very first print of that, the Chris Claremont one, at Claremont in Terry Austin, John Byrne, can't remember who else. Oh, I don't Lane. have that one. I need I need volume one and volume three. I only have volume two. Um, Claremont, uh, Uncanny X Men. Really? Uh, didn't they? And volume three still in print. Is it or is it or is it just the? Uh, uh, I want I want the the DM cover. I thought the DM cover was out of stock or out of print. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you guys? What was your first on these? I'm curious. Gosh, that is a good question. Uh, let me take a look behind me here. I think my first one was probably Uncanny X-Force. Uncanny um, X-Force, that's a good one. Yeah, good one. I remember being in the comic store, my comic shop in Annapolis, and... Um, I, I just was going down the aisle and saying, "What's good? What's good?" And they said, uh, "If you're, uh, even if you're not into X Men, you should try Uncanny X Force. This book is great. It's got Deadpool. It's got this. It's got that." And they just raved about it so much. I just said, "Okay, just give me, just give me the book." And that's what I got. Um, and yeah, I loved it immediately. That's that, and I think. Um, New X Men, or what really got me into the X Men, and then Astonishing X Men. Morrison's X Men, yeah, yeah, that those, are, that was... and then then the Ultimates really got me into uh, sort of Marvel more in general. Um, those those books, those uh, books right there were the ones that really got me into Omnis, <clears throat> and then the statues that got me into statues are right behind me. The bombshells. Those are what those are my gateway drug. <laughs> this, the, really, that was your that was your statue purchase. Those are my first statue purchases. Were those bombshells, and then it was off to the races. I think for statues for me, it was probably my statue of the girls from Magic Night Ray Earth. I have a story I I tell on my show where. On eBay, I looked for because there's three characters of these Magic Knight Ray Earths, right? There's um, wait, three what, girls. Is, what are we talking about? I'm it's a manga, oh, anime. Right. Okay, anime. that's why. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, uh, I found two. I found Umi and Fu, but I never found a Hikaru. This was in 1995. When I got on eBay in 1997, my sole purpose for joining eBay was to get Hikaru. I never saw her. For 10 years, my wife and I went to Japan in 2008. And then in two, that January of 2008, I saw one pop up on eBay. And I'm like, holy shit, should I wait? Because surely Japan's going to have it. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. I bought it. And I never saw it when we were in Japan. So for 10 years, like every week, once a week, I'm not lying, I would check to see if eBay, if anybody, because that was the source, right? Like eBay. Whoa. In Yahoo Japan, Yahoo Japan, when it was still around, I would check to see if a Hikaru statue from Sega had popped up. So that's my statue story, the Magic Holy Barrier. smoke, 10 years? Dude, that's one of my prized possessions, way, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm a patient motherfucker. <laughs> you are. 10 <laughs> years. Yeah, I man. think a lot of people would have lost interest after a period of time. 
Ten years. I, I, I hand it to you. Did you at least uh, get, a, get a good price or anything? It was. It was. It was more than the that I bought the other two for. So it was like a hundred and twenty. It wasn't bad at all compared to what it goes for now. Because it's just it's just one of those things that was only in print for like a year or two. I go get it. Somebody wants yeah, to see I'd it. Yeah, I'd like to see it. I, I'd love to see it. Ten years, Omar, you're a jackass. Don't do that shit. <laughs> Jesus, he sucks all the room, uh, all the air out of the room whenever he's on. <laughs> Holy Christ! Uh, Tolga asks if uh, I read Lady Keller. The answer is yes. I can't wait to get volume two because volume one was awesome. I love Lady Keller. So, yeah, I've been hearing good stuff about that book. I remember when it was coming out in singles. I was working at a store, and there was just crazy prices for it. <laughs> Man, I love Omar. I'm so glad he's here on the show. Yeah, it's good to have you back, Omar. Oh, thanks for the invite. I was, uh, why are you going 75 on a 55? Because the goddamn Omnibros are on. <laughs> <laughs> So this okay, is uh, Hikaru. Hold it there for a little bit so the camera can focus on it. Uh, she's from a Clamp series from Japan. Uh, Clamp is a four women group that do manga, and then they do anime. They're the ones that did like Card Capture Sakura, and uh, what's the famous one? Um, or <sighs> damn, I can't remember. Oh, X nineteen ninety nine. They did Tokyo Babylon. Angelic Lair Chobits. And uh, this is from Magic Night Rear. And this is Hikaru. Yeah. Well, I know you're speaking English, but I don't understand a word you're saying. But that's cool. Uh, Japanese books, man. Yeah. So she took me 10 years to get. That's amazing. Oh, I'm that's a really that. good shot right there. Your camera right there. froze perfectly. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this that is, is her. a cool story. Favorite character. So I was, I was stubborn. So wow. don't give up on your dreams of reprints of omnibuses, guys. Yeah. Or you'll run into them in the wild somewhere, right? It happens. Because yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people. I think somebody was asking earlier if we wait for reprints. I'm one of those people that will wait for reprints. <laughs> okay. I just read John Wilson's comment. Omar spent $125 on a statue, 10 bucks on his webcam. <laughs> 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 That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm one of those people that, that will wait out. If, if there was a book, because I, I have most of the books I, I want, except for like the uh, Promethea, uh, Absolutes. Oh. Yeah. You, you own and you really like, because I'm still holding on for that omnibus that they solicited in 2000. Oh, yeah, right. 2009 I think and then they canceled and they solicited again and then I think they solicited three times um but I will I will patiently wait for something like I I, I cannot go over like cover price for on a book like if it, if it was a hundred dollars you know I have to get it for 50 or 60 I think oh yeah I haven't, yeah. I haven't yeah. missed much many books that went out of print though you're the Hagelmeister. You're the one I was buying the books from, and you said, <laughs> talk me down. Don't just pay what I'm asking for. you got to haggle. I'm like, oh, okay, I, sorry. I do, I do that at shows, too, <laughs> like with, uh, especially with kids. Like if a kid comes up to me and pays me full price, I'm like, all right, man, I'm going to teach you how to haggle, dude. I'm asking, <laughs> you know, I'm asking $5 for this. Hey, will you take three? And I'm like, three. I'm not taking three. I'll take four. Then you're like, maybe halfway, three fifty. And I'm like, all right, fuck it, let's do three fifty. I don't say fuck it, but I'm like, yeah, let's do three fifty. <laughs> that's just my personality because I'm that way. I will ask, hey, will you take this? Well, right? if because I, what's if the I'm first a, somebody can say? Yeah, you know? no, I agree. I'm when I'm at shows, I always haggle, but I never thought to haggle on the omnibus group. In the group? <laughs> yeah, no, it just never occurred to me. And and that was the only. I think that's the only thing I've ever uh, purchased from you. And, that was so funny. Dude, you need to haggle. Don't take the first price I'm <laughs> offering. What's wrong with you? <laughs> My man of steel <laughs> paperbacks right here. Oh, yeah. Those are the ones that sold you. I'm glad they went to a good home. 
Is it, and I'm is glad it, you is didn't it the one that. that's really expensive, like Volume 4 or something? Volume 4, yeah. And I think another one. But Volume 4 is the really hard one to get. Yeah, that's the one that's out of print. That's a series that deserves an omnibus. A couple omnibus. Yeah, so I think my, my first omnibus i mean i mean, I know my first ever like premium format hardcover i bought was absolute um long yeah. halloween like, years ago that had to been like 10 12 years oh, ago oh yeah you're right that's, that's that a good one 2009 or something like that that's I remember a good I bought one that and I, I i brought it to me to court because i had to wait in court for like a traffic ticket or something like that so i just brought that with me and read this giant book in the courtroom um, other than that, like uh, actual actual omnibus, uh, I remember because uh, I was working at a comic book store when they were first coming out. Things like Alias and like uh, X Men and Hulk. I remember we had an Infinite Crisis at the shop, and it kept falling off the shelf, and it just got destroyed. From falling off the <laughs> oh shelf. man! Oh my god! Yeah, and I'm, now I'm now I'm seeing people spending like four or five hundred bucks for that thing. I'm like, whoa! I should have bought that when I had the chance. Yeah, um, they teased us a little one. bit. About that coming back into print, I think. Oh, they have. They teased a little bit about it. I think it was it was a mistake. What it was, it was like a trade paperback, but it was one of those early early solicitations, like the uh, one of the catalogs had come out and somebody saw it. So everybody's like, because it, it didn't give you anything, right? It didn't tell you if it was a trade paperback or a hardcover. So everybody's like, oh my god, they're bringing the omnibus back into print, and it just turned out to be like the, I think the deluxe edition or something. I like think that. an absolute of it came out or something. Yeah, uh, didn't it? like it absolute infinite crisis or something? Or yeah, just, so, something. That thing's a beast too, man. It's just like I think like the the major storyline stuff, but the omnibus right. and all the science and all that stuff. I think my first actual omnibus was, I think same as Jess was new New Mutants. Or I'm sorry, New X Men. Because I remember I bought that right before I went to Morrison Con. So that mine's signed by Frank Quietly and Grant Morrison. That's awesome. And huh. um, I think that same convention I bought them at, I also got the Secret Warriors on the bus. I think those were my first ones I got. And mm. after that, I still have like my DCBS orders. And I started getting really big in Omnibus because I was getting so far behind on reading single issues that by the time I got around to reading the single issues, you know, the omnibus came out. I was like, why didn't I just buy the fucking omnibus where I get better, you know, better paper and no ads and a better format and a better presentation and, and stuff like that. So I just stuck with that after that. And then, you know, this order, like if I go back and look at that stuff, it's like Uncanny X-Force, Infinity Gauntlets, like all the big ones that are like super out of print right now that everybody's like clamoring for. I bought just off of DCBS and I've been hooked ever since just because it's just such a better format for my reading style, my lifestyle where I just got tired of having 50, 60 long boxes of books. Yeah. I, to read. I had to, you know, kill my back and shift 50, 60 boxes of books, find the issues. And every fucking time, I swear to God, every time I go, oh, okay, well, here's issues 200 to 220. I want to read. Why am I missing issue 15 and 12? Like, I know I had those issues. And yeah. Just, forget about it. I don't want to read it if I don't have the whole thing. Kind of, that happened kind of to me, too. I will, I will tell you what got me, like, um, so I bought that yeah. Uncanny X-Men one. And the reason I had so many omnibuses at first was because I was part of the Amazon glitch. Oh, uh, the we, famous we, we talked, glitch. Yeah, from 2000 and, I think it was 2000. Eight, was it I can't remember. I just remember my buddy texting me on a Sunday and saying, get your ass up and go buy some $8. And I was like, what? And I'm the type of person, like, you saw how persistent I am with these things. <laughs> Man, I, I had to talk to like three different customer service representatives at Amazon and their managers. And then by the fifth call, they were like, fuck it, send this guy his damn books and tell him to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> how many did you buy? Oh man, twelve I think. I brought the like the Mark Miller omnibus. The I bought Captain Britain from Barnes and Noble because they had the similar uh, glitch. Oh wow! They had the similar glitch, but theirs were was a little. Theirs were a little more. They were like ten dollars and seventy four cents per omnibus. <laughs> oh, but you got ripped off. Through <laughs> there, I I got Inferno and I got 
uh, Captain Britain. So things that are completely whales right now. And but Amazon, man, yeah, I remember Howard the Duck. What else did I get? Like, yeah, I remember Wolverine's the one that stood out because that was the one I was really happy with. I bought a few for my brother, Iron Man, Volume One. Yeah, so it was um, it was weird. And I know the guy that made that mistake of Diamond got fired, right? Like he's gone, dead somewhere. And ever since that, ever since that day, we've been praying for another glitch like that, right? And I remember even Bleeding Cool got in on that. They were like. They started doing a glitch watch list every couple of months. Like, oh, this is, they're making a price mistake. Well, I mean, Amazon does every once in a while, right? Sometimes you get lucky. Like Wonder Woman Volume 2. I think that costed us, like, cost us what, like 30 bucks through Amazon? Yeah, they made a price mistake on Supergirl, the first Silver exactly, Age Supergirl. Right? That was, I got that for $17. And uh, they did one for Kamandi, but then they canceled that solicitation. Now, DC resolicit it so i still have mine in my order so i'm i'll be making a call probably when that book drops and i'm like hey wait a minute this is the exact same book you guys need to honor this yeah and i'm worried i mean if you persist omar again from <laughs> 10 years ago this guy <laughs> this guy so i know uh, my friends make this joke because i like they're like surely you're on a fucking call list that they're like oh fuck it send him a gift card <laughs> yeah, but kind of like what you were saying, Omar. I've I've never really on the bus and paid like super crazy money for it. I've never really paid much more over cover. And usually, if I pay over cover, it's because I got it on eBay and it was like free shipping. So I'm like, oh, well, if it's you know ten dollars over recover, I'll just consider that the shipping price kind of thing. You know, uh, I I almost <laughs> fuck that. Uh, I'm still kind of butthurt over that astonishing X-Men fiasco. I was telling you. Oh, you were, yeah, that sucks. I, I just now a week later. Did you did you did you get a hold of them to say, hey, this is the this is what happened? Did you talk to their customer service? Because I mean, that's that's what I would have done if it was me. Oh, dude, I I, I them understand them, that. I bother them, and they were like, just there's nothing we can do. And I was like, because the lady that I bought it from, you know, she canceled it because her husband decided not to sell his books or whatever bullshit nonsense they came up with, and then refunds me. Canceled it and refunded me the fucking a week beat. later. Yeah, a that's week. not cool. So it took like a week later. So I'm on. I'm. I, I made like five phone calls to eBay, and I was like, "This person's like is holding me hostage with my money by sending it to me as an e-check." I paid immediately. She got those funds immediately. How come I can't get it back? And it's sitting in my PayPal as a pending. You know that they said it's going to take another week to process. And I just now got the notification that it's it went through. So. That just left a bad taste in my mouth for Astonishing X Men. I'm, I'll, I'll just wait for a reprint or, or, or something. Oh no, I'm finding you that. I'm finding you that for seventy five bucks. That's my I mean, life goal. If it works, it works. You know, or I'll just pick up the fucking hardcovers or something. But I mean, I'm not. That that was enough for me. I'm not dealing with that. But I mean, yeah, I don't have much. Silver Surfer Omnibus, but I'm not paying two hundred bucks for that. I'm not. That's 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 out of control. Yeah. Things like that. Other than that, I have most of the out of print omnibus that I want. You know, I got I got uh, Annihilation for dirt cheap. I've got you know. I, I love bought, that omnibus. I, I can't believe that they never brought that one back into print. That's weird. And they gave yeah. it such a small print to start with. Yeah, because they didn't, they didn't really didn't expect mm -hmm. it to sell. Now look, I mean, every time there's a new damn cosmic DNA book out there, it sells out at InStock usually day one or two, and then they have to wait for. And I knew. Uh, I knew those Rama Kings were going to sell out, so I bought those again off of DCBS and pre-ordered them that way because I knew that stuff. Mm -hmm. Cosmic stuff doesn't, you know, they don't think there's that that big enough of a fan base, so they don't they underprint them and you know nobody cares. They they think nobody cares. So I, that's how I got my Annihilation so cheap. My Hickman Fantastic Four, I got those off of DCBS pre-ordered at like half off, you know, because I just love that run. You know, stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm not really looking for any kind of omnibus right now other than the new stuff that's that's coming out that, you know, we can all get for dirt cheap. And then next week or this week, whatever, the Akira box set comes out through DCBS. That's I have right. Amazon for 100 bucks. I've got it locked in at 103 through Amazon. That was yeah, the cheapest I, I found it. I, 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 I share that. I share that link through the Facebook group because I was like, "There, I don't think it's going to get less than this," because uh, it's Kadansha. At yeah, most, you're going to get like 30, 35 percent off. So that's yeah. insane. And right now on Amazon.
Amazon, it's it's like full price. It's like three percent off or something like. What? What is full price? Two hundred. I think bucks? it's one ninety nine. I think it's one ninety nine. Wow. If only we oh, had. So the- I have you to thank for that, Omar. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, I didn't know yeah. you were the originator <laughs> of that link. That's cool. Yeah, I, I ordered it that, that day. Um, kept up with the price because I use Tractor to keep up with prices. Yeah. And it notified me that it went less than 106. So I was like, oh, cool, 103. Hell yeah, I'll do that. Um, uh, right now, it's a 33% off. It's 134.99 on Amazon right now. And I say it will probably stay there because it's Kadansha and – I don't, maybe, maybe, maybe it, Black Friday. I don't know. You know, I really don't know how many they're printing. Um, I know they're older books. They don't reprint. So, but it is Kira. So who knows? I think when, when it's something like that, where it's such a high dollar item that you're not going to see it stick around very long. I don't think they're going to make that much I, of it. I will tell you this much. I will, I'm going to buy this. If they ever announce Color Akira from the epic Marvel epic run, I will fucking rebuy it again because <laughs> I love the colors of that book. Like everything was, you know, everything had to be approved by Katsuhi Jorotomo. So it, it was like, he looked at the colors and he would look at the page and be like, okay, this is good. This is easy to change. And this is, I mean, the first time I ever saw like computer separated colors were done by Steve O'Liff in this group. It was amazing. And a few couple, probably like two years ago, he was selling original pages from his recolor pages. And I, was, I did not have any money to buy any of those pages. They were beautiful, though. Now, I still have my epic run down there. And I keep them. But, man, if they ever announce a hardcover collection of Akira recolored, I, I will be all over that. I don't give a shit if I have to pay full $200 price. Uh, I will. Because <laughs> it, it is beautiful, guys. Yeah, mine. Uh, my Akira box set is locked in at uh, one hundred two forty nine. Yeah, that must be what I am too. Yeah, I think we all got it. I don't think I don't think you're gonna see it for that cheap on uh, in stock trades at all. I think it'll be like thirty thirty five percent off or something like that for for manga on there. Yeah, at, if it's Kanacha, it's probably like thirty or thirty five. No more than that. Oh, speaking of, Justin and I have that Akira vinyl. Vinyl neck. Yeah, that thing's Contract. out of print, guys. Dude, it's like people want like two hundred bucks for it on eBay right yeah. now. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. I just lucked into that. I just thought, oh, this is supposed to be great movie, great soundtrack, great book. I'll just get it. I love that soundtrack. Bam. There was only, I think there were less than eight hundred printed of the of the color that we have. Yeah, there's the other one that's like the like red and the red spatter one or something that I think might be less. But I remember I opted out of that one because the one we got was the 150 gram, I think, or whatever. And the see, other I one was like right the 88 there. was like the 88 gram. Like it was the lesser quote unquote lesser quality or whatever. Let me see. I have it right here. I got mine here too. Let me say you guys in your vinyl. That is pretty, though. I love it. I love the soundtrack. Like, I used to really big, be really big into, like, audiophile stuff for, like, sound systems in my house. Mm-hmm. And I always had, like, you know, like, high-end polka audio and, and things like that. And the uh, chase scene at the beginning of the movie was always what I tested it out on. Because that just was, like, some of my favorite music. The surround sound on the, the new release, the uh, Blu-ray, was amazing. Yeah, 150 gram pressing yeah. on this. Wow. And then Man. the other one I want to take, you know, I think it was like 88 gram or whatever is going for more. Like those are legitimately selling like at 200 bucks right now. It's crazy. Wow, really? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, I think Newberry Comics still has a uh, a different colored vinyl version, but they still have it at regular price. If anybody out there is seeking the Akira vinyl, I knew Matthew Dubay was. I don't think he watches this show, though. The fucker. 
I'm still waiting for my uh, Aliens anthology uh, from Mondo to come in. That Right, yeah, that's been put off for a couple of months now. Yeah, I think so. It's a collection of all their movies, like one through four? I think or... it's four, yeah, it's four albums. The Quadrology? Yeah, but it's a beautiful box set. Like, it's a big old slipcase box and everything. It's, it's, yeah. It looks great. And I think it was like a fair price. It was like... I don't know. I want to say like 60, 70 bucks or something. Yeah, it was a good price for four LPs. Yeah, it's my, the, the buddy that co hosts my show, he also collects vinyl and he was like, oh, you got to get into it. I'm like, have you seen my basement? Don't have room for another There's only so hobby. many rabbit holes you can fall into, man. I don't have enough room for another hobby. Look at the like, bullshit I buy because I want one figure. I end up buying four of them. <laughs> I love to see a man sicker than I am. <laughs> That's me, dude. Makes me feel so much better. Really puts things into perspective, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Like, you could tell your wife, look, look at this asshole <laughs> we were talking to last night. <laughs> you time. think I'm bad? Look at Omar. Yeah, look at Omar. <laughs> He's got a basement and an attic, the fucking shit that he has. <laughs> His two kids are never going to go to college. <laughs> <laughs> Omar's gonna try and haggle college for his kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will. Oh, man, I'll give you. I'll give you. I'll give you fifteen thousand a year. Fifteen thousand. <laughs> Throw in a couple of Amazon gift cards. You got yourself a deal. <laughs> Tyler Blunt, you are not mad at me. You you uh, are super happy that I got you into vinyl. <laughs> Tyler. Yeah, Tyler, you're also happy because I got him into the video game vinyls as well. Yeah. Well, now that is something I could get into. Man, they're so cool, and some of the ones that are released. Like the special editions of, I'm like, oh, I there's can't a, do it. There's a Sonic Mania album that just came out, and is like, yeah, so for like eighty bucks now. Like, there's a big old thing for it. I think Tyler got that. Um, I think Tyler got that Sonic soundtrack, didn't you? I know he's he got a boy. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all sell some college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know he loves the game. Like he reviewed the game, and it right. looked like a fun game. I can't believe I haven't picked it up yet. Um, that came with a big like Sonic statue too. So yeah, he I did pick Sonic. up the Sonic Mania album. <laughs> yeah. So that Sonic Mania album is out of print now, Gabe. Yeah, yeah. There's a uh, video game vinyl group that I, I lurk in. Ah. And it's one of those things where it's just like, uh. 80 bucks and they're like you know well fuck you you're an asshole because that's ebay prices you know we want it we want it it's almost like how our group is not so extreme and violent or mad towards people but <laughs> it's the same thing we'll say no dude you can't you know you can't sell that for ebay prices in this group, you know uh, oh, it's, a, it's a group like ours only for vinyl right right oh cool it's, uh, it's, uh, it's nice. video game vinyl too just video game vinyl so that's so, nice. uh, there's a Final Fantasy VII soundtrack vinyl that I I, I saw and I was like, fuck. Dude, that was hmm. I, well, I know there's a lot of Japanese releases too that look completely amazing. Of like a lot of those Castlevania games because you know the Japanese soundtracks were different, like Castlevania, Dracula X, and all them. Like I know Castlevania Three had a different s soundtrack to it. It was so good. Yeah, I've seen that uh, at the record stores out here. You know, I do have one vinyl. I forgot. I do have one vinyl because I had to get it, and it is uh, the Transformers soundtrack. Oh, I have that. Vinyl. Um, and I got it signed by, uh, what's his name? Stan Bush and, um, oh, Vince. Oh, golly. The guy that did the soundtrack to Transformers and Rocky IV. Oh, my God. I can't believe I can't remember. Vince, Vince Ticoli, that guy. Um, so I got to sign by the the Dodger announcer. No, oh, hold on, <laughs> double check that. I thought he meant that too. Um, but Sonic Mania, yeah, it's going between like it's it's weird. It's all over the place. Uh, between thirty five and eighty dollars for that Sonic Mania uh, vinyl. Mm. Yeah, Vince Decola, that's his name. That was close. I can see Tyler Blunt. Every day I walk into my office, put on Transformers, You've Got the Touch, pop a Dr. Pepper, and do some taxes. I can totally see that. 
<laughs> I can see him dancing around to You've Got the Touch. That's with a his, great song. My kids love that Pepper. song. With his Dr. Pepper. I remember uh, that song just because that Transformers animated movie just such a a cornerstone in my childhood. But then I watched, yeah, yeah. Um, what was the uh, Dirk Diggler movie called? Boogie Nights. Boogie Nights. And then he's like singing that song. Like he did like a record for that song too. Yeah. I saw uh, Stan Bush perform that live. And Vince the Killer. Wow. It was, it was really awesome. Is that a, like, a bunch a, of... like a TF con or something? It was, uh, yeah, it was bot con a couple years ago. Bot we, uh, con. Yeah, it was the Transformers convention before. I think we went to the last one, uh, one of my co-hosts and I, and we covered it. So it was in 2016 was the last one. I cannot t- wait to tell my wife that you exist. <laughs> <laughs> Sweetie, <laughs> there's a guy that goes to Transformer conventions. I am nothing. I am, I am nothing compared to this guy. He is the god among go- uh, nerds. He is the <laughs> ultimate god of nerds. Wait, wait a fucking minute. <laughs> you are. You're the god. Oh, Botcon. No. Botcon. Botcon. That's the best. Oh, I'm sure a couple of guys in the group have gone to Botcon. Botcon. Now it's like Hascon. <laughs> well, no, Botcon wasn't a was not an official like con. I, I thought, right? I thought that was no. It was. It was the one that was put on by Hasbro, and then. Oh, yeah, and now they have Hascon, I think. It's the one, or TFCon. One of those two is the official one now. Yeah, Botcon was bought over by, like, a Chinese company, and they kind of separated in 2016. <laughs> so. <laughs> you're saving my marriage. The group is saying you're saving my marriage. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and Omar slowly spirals into oblivion. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's saved in the wake of it. Uh, all right, so what what time is it? Shit. Ten thirty eight my time. Yeah. Vegas time, seven thirty eight, I assume. Seven thirty eight over here. Yep. It's stripper time. Oh, it's always stripper, stripper time. time. Always. always. There's always a single mom out there somewhere needing diapers. <laughs> I was gonna say, there's always some lady with no souls in her eyes. <laughs> Need some money. Gabe's got that predatory thinking. <laughs> hey man, you gotta support single moms, man. That's yeah. right. <laughs> single moms. <laughs> I can't wait to come out there and support some single moms. Oh, dude. Uh, <laughs> I uh, I say things at work I shouldn't say all the time, right? <laughs> so somebody that kind of gets on my nerves asked me what I was coming as for Halloween. And I was like, well, I'm not going to be working here anymore on Halloween. So I won't be here. So you can consider that I'm coming as your dad. <laughs> Cause he won't be there. That's brutal. Wow, man. <laughs> that is harsh. Yeah. I'm coming as your dad. <laughs> Did you um get that Zelda um vinyl game? Yeah, yeah, I got that one. That's a really good one. Is yeah, that the Ocar- Ocarina one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the one. It's really pretty. Like I just the artwork on the slip cases and everything is great. Oh yeah. Great um, presentation yeah. and the music's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, the orchestrator one, right? That one's awesome. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that first pressing sold out. They did a second pressing. I don't know if the second pressing sold out. It's just so funny how these things sell out so quick. I mean, it's not funny, but I mean, it's just like surprising. And then they're able to go right back and do another pressing. It's almost like they they kind of plan it that way. It's almost like they have it kind of planned out where we're only going to do a short amount at first so that it dries up some kind of appeal and then we'll just make our money on the uh, the second prints yeah the second I, prints I, are um, usually not as luxur- luxurious as the first prints right like they leave out stuff it's usually like from the ones i've seen it'll be like a different color ah uh, okay 
Different color vinyl. Different color vinyl. Yeah. And you know, as bad as you guys are, there's always a motherfucker out there that's collecting all of them. Yeah, he's probably some <laughs> jerk out there who goes to like vinyl con or something. <laughs> Totally guilty of having gone to record convention. Final con, you guys are busting my balls about fucking. Con, really. <laughs> <laughs> like to beat up the fucking vinyl guys. Up. <laughs> Start picking fights, nerds. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah like all, all the stinky fatties from Botcon, sure. <laughs> uh, the hi- hierarchy of geekdom. Uh, that bell curve of stinky fatties. Pogs. Pogs. Oh, Pogs. <laughs> I remember Pogs. I remember I was working at a comic book store, and the guy that owned it was like, this is the next best thing, man, I swear. And he bought, like, so many cases of Pogs, and I'm like, what is this? He's like, oh, dude, it's like crack kids are going to love it. You guy usually called what was going to be the next hottest item. He was in the Beanie Babies long before anybody else was collecting Beanie Babies. <laughs> Jeez. He knew he knew how to survive that '90s horrible, horrible uh, '90s market, man. The Beanie Babies, where you had to buy the little co- the the protective covering for the little heart tag that was on them. Right. Yep. yep the case Excellent. and the cases, and then like he went moved he moved on to like mat Matchbox cars, and he was always up in the then, next best thing, whatever it was. He was always getting it. But yeah, I remember when he bought all those Pogs. <laughs> I bet he's buying pop vinyls right now. Yeah, those things don't seem to stop, man. No, they don't. Couldn't find my uncle's. But the, uh, the one in the, in the money vault. Yeah, the money one? yeah, the one in the money bin. I couldn't find it. I went to good lord, fucking guy my age going into hot topic. <laughs> I know that's really brutal. <laughs> I've done that too. <laughs> I mean, do you know what it takes for my I mean, ass to go into fucking hot fucking, fucking topic? topic. I look like a creeper. There's like 18, 19 year old girls there, and they're oh. like, "What are you doing here?" I'm looking for the next pop figure. <laughs> 18 or Limited. 19? It's mostly 13 year olds. I go in there and oh, I'm just, yeah, I know, oh. but they look 18 <laughs> and 19. That's even creepier. But yeah, yeah I'm like, yeah. Oh, I'm looking for my com pop figure. <laughs> Can you look at the other store's inventory and see if there's a, a Scrooge McDuck one for me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Story of my life, man. Oh, that's how it was last time. One of the vinyls I bought, I got a, uh, a Toy Story vinyl that I bought, and it was shipped to Hot Topic. And I went in there, and it was just like, oh, man, I don't belong in here. No. I remember when Hot Topics, like, 15, 20 years ago, they were all, like, super goth and scary, and, you know, you had to be dare to walk into one of them. You know, well, it's other. weird, right? Because what, what they... 15, 20 years ago, what was pop culture was like, you know, Transformers or things we grew up with, like He-Man and Flash Gordon, right? Now you walk in and, and it makes you feel old. You're like, fucking shit, Pokemon is fucking like old? Because they, they have retro shirts of Pokemon and things like that. The kids grew up, you know, people in their 20s grew up with. Well, yeah. I'm I like, mean, oh my I God. Go and I'll buy like some 90s like Rugrats shirt and I'm like, fuck, I feel so dirty buying this right now in front of everybody. <laughs> But literally, that's where I find like the coolest shirts. Is that hot, hot topic now? I'm like, fuck, man, I gotta walk in here and go in a fucking hot topic, man. I gotta go in a hot topic and just dig <laughs> through these pile of shirts, and then you know, sometimes I'll just be an asshole and just unfold like thirty of them and leave them there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Attack on Louis is twenty two. Uh, I remember that age. Well, I, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I remember like when I was like, "Oh man, I'm too old for for Power Rangers or Pokemon." I was just kind of just at that age group where it just wasn't too much on my radar. And now it's all back, and all the people Louis age is like, "Oh man, Power Rangers is back. That's the coolest thing ever." And I'm like, "Oh, Power Rangers." Yeah, I remember walking into high school with my Dragon Ball Z shirt. He knew, like, they were like, "What is Dragon Balls?" Because that's the way they read it. <laughs> Are you Dragon Balls? <laughs> yeah, there were so many jokes. I'm like, "Fuck it, I'm never wearing this shirt again." <laughs> I have to a Ninja Turtle sweater, dude. I got made fun of so bad for a Ninja Turtle sweater, and I never wore it again. It was high school, man. I used to wear like a, I had a Wolverine shirt. They were like, "Oh, you like comic books?" Now it's so weird. Now it's like, it's it's more acceptable, right? Which is cool. Oh yeah, I think it's awesome. 
Yeah, but back in my day, we had to hide our comic books. I still, dude, I still hide from shit from real people. Like, um, my buddy Rob and I talked about this. Like, remember the Amiibos, the Nintendo Amiibos that came out? Um, well, there were limited edition ones that were like specific to stores, like Best Buy or, to- or Toys R Us. So we literally stood in line at six o'clock in the morning waiting for like a uh, Grand Ninja at Toys R Us. And cars would drive by going, hey, what are you guys uh, in line for? Now, before any other fucking dork in the line could say Greninja, I was like, oh, it's the new Call of Duty game. It's coming <laughs> There's no way I'm going to admit I'm waiting in line for a fucking toy. <laughs> for an amiibo? <laughs> I don't want to get nerd shamed. <laughs> <laughs> nerd shamed. <laughs> well, I remember... I, I always tell the story that when I first used to go to San Diego, like nobody cared. This is like 2000, 2002, 2003. Nobody cared. And I would walk up and be able to buy my ticket. And now like it's a fucking line. You have to, people wait outside, like t- tickets sell out immediately. Hall H has tents because people camp out. They spend $500 for, you know, uh, a ticket to San Diego Comic Con, and they sleep in the grass because they're camping out for, for the panels. Yeah, but I that, remember that, I could just walk up there day of the show and just be like, "Yep, yeah, you know, let me just get a weekly pass, please." And while I'm here, I'll buy a pass for next week or for next year, so I don't have to line up again. I, it's crazy. Yeah, those, those days are long gone, and Dragon Con's catching up, and so is the New York Comic Con. They're they're like that. It's crazy how many, uh, people go into these things of course like you know san diego comic-con has changed too over the years it's mm. it's it's everything now it's tv it's shit that you're like what what does this have to do with comics or geek them right like like tv shows that are there yeah and i remember like the-, the last one i went to i think it was 2015 i think it was the last san diego i went to and they had uh that it was a short-lived TV show called Pan Am, and it was just about you know. Oh yeah, I remember oh, that. Oh yeah, I remember that with Christina Ricci. Ricci? Christina Ricci. Yeah. They had this huge Pan Am like booth like setup where it looked like an airplane, and you could sit down and, and stuff like that. And I was just like, this this is nothing to do with anything pop culture or, or geek related or, or anything like that, you know. But that's just what Comic Con in San Diego turned into. It just turned into just this this fest of this black hole that just sucks everything into it, you know, and that's fine. I mean, bring on the new fans, bring on more people. That's, that's great. But it's just, yeah, totally not hating on it. It's just so different now. It's way too crowded for my ass. Oh yeah. That's why I kind of appreciate smaller shows, you know, just with creators. I don't have to deal with like any movie stars or wrestlers or porn stars. Porn stars. Oh, yeah, they're everywhere too. Cool. So let's go ahead and uh, wrap this up. I got to go get some single mom some diaper money. <laughs> All right. Not really. Got to get my wife and my kids diapers. Well, my wife don't need diapers, but she's asking to go get diapers for the kids. So, huh. So there goes some omnibus money right there. That's not fair. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and let's wrap up this bad boy. Um, real quick, of course, everybody watching and everybody who's joined us in the chat, it's always our heartfelt thanks and appreciation for everybody who joins in. We're, we, we were sitting at like 35 people watching throughout this show this week, so that's always awesome. Um, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and let everybody know where they can find us and stalk us on social media. Omar, let everybody know where they can find you, brother man. Okay. Uh, they can find me on my YouTube channel, at, and it's called Near Mint Condition. And we publish a sh- weekly show, usually release them on Thursdays, where the f- four friends, including myself, talk about geek culture. Comic books, anime, video games, whatever. Uh, and I'm also in the Facebook group. Group, And if you haven't joined, you should. Uh, nice. You know what? Why is, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the Facebook group link into our, our description. I don't know why it's not in there. But either way, uh, Jess... Where can everybody find you? Uh, you can find me at ilovebotcon.com. <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me on my YouTube channel, Omnidog's Vault. 
That's Omnidog's Vault, and I also am a member of the Facebook Omnibus group that Riley Moore created, the Omnibus Collectors Comic Swap and Community. So right. reach out and touch someone. <laughs> I got the touch. So, everybody, uh, you can find me uh, here on YouTube under Gabe Infinity Watch. Uh, please, if this is your first time here, give this Omni Bros station, our channel here, a thumbs up. Give us a subscription. We are at 500. I think we're maybe like two away from 500 subscribers. Woohoo! So that's awesome, and I appreciate everybody for doing that. You guys are the greatest uh, audience that we have. Um, you can find me on my own YouTube channel, Gabe Infinity Watch. That's in our description here. Same with uh, Omnidog's uh, YouTube channel as well. And Omar's Near Mint Condition. That's all in our description. So you guys can always check that out and uh, click those links and share the love there as well. I'm on Instagram at Gabe Infinity Watch as well. And uh, I go by Gabe Bustamantes on the Facebook group because that's my government name. <laughs> and government name. That's my government name. All right, everybody. Again, uh, thank you so much, everybody in the chat, everybody who's viewing us. I hope you all have a great night. Peace and love. Peace and love.